So welcome back to Sabina Park. This is day three of the first match here in the West Indies Championship for 2024. And we greet you with good news that cricket will continue. It's bright and sunny here in Sabina, at Sabina Park. And rather humid as well. And the Jamaica Scorpions, the home team, they are up against it here because they are 76 for four in their second innings. They are trailing the Winnow Islands Volcanoes by 182 runs on first innings. And they are about to resume with Nkuma Bona on 36 and Gordon Bryan, the night watchman. He is going to restart with Nkuma Bona, the West Indies mid-lord of butter. And the Scorpions found themselves in a big hole on day one after being dismissed for 159. The, the Volcanoes, they really rammed home that advantage with 341. Several half centuries in that 341. The best of the lot, Johan Jeremiah with 80. And then 71 from Shamar Springer, followed by 57 from the vice captain, Ryan John. The umpires, Jacqueline Williams and Gregory Brathwaite. He's from Barbados. Williams is from Jamaica. They make their way out. And before we start the day's proceedings, we're going to be joined by Keswick Williams. I am Jerome Foster, and we'll take you through the day. Uh, Keswick, just your expectations for today on a whole, not just, well, firstly, for the volcanoes and then for the scorpions. Hey, good morning to our viewers and our listeners out there. It's good to be back here at Sabina Park, third day of this Scorpion and the Volcanoes game here at Sabina Park. We have been here and we've, we've been here for the last three days. We saw some awesome cricket from the Volcanoes, continuing their form from last year for the tournament. They're in a really good position now. Picking up four wickets yesterday in the second innings. Darius Martin leading the charge. And Ryan John continuing his good form. Did well in the first innings with the ball and the bat. And now he start again with the ball. So they're doing a fantastic job as Nkoma Bonner. And Gordon Bryan walks out. Gordon Bryan did a lovely job as well with the ball. Yesterday morning in the first session. Helping the Scorpions to win that first session. Yesterday. So... They look good. They look fresh. Yes, it's the third day, but they do look fresh. Saw them warming up this morning, full of energy. The Windward Island Volcanoes. So we're expecting a good day's play. The Jamaica Scorpion will have to go out there and try. The first thing that they have to do is try to get to, get to lunch, occupying the crease as much as possible. I'm thinking that they, they will have to try to bat at least, bat out the day to give themselves a chance to squeeze themselves back in. And Koma Bonner definitely has the ability to do that. Batters in the hut, Abijay Mansing, Morris, Green. and Pete Salmon, and Derval Green, who can use his bat as well. So, for some reason, I think that they have the ability to do it, but they will have to dug deep here, Foster. Absolutely. And it's going to take a lot of guts, a lot of heart. A lot of concentration and dedication. There are no devils in the wicket. We use that cliche. But it's an easy paced wicket. It's just that the, the Volcanoes bowlers, they have been far more consistent in their approach. And Ryan John gets his stretches out. And he's going to be starting from this, the Courtney Walsh end. And just an update to our viewers. For those who missed the match this morning, down under, in Hobart, the West Indies lost by 11 runs to Australia in that first T20. The Australians making 213 for seven, 70 for David Warner in his 100th T20 international. And the best of the lot for the bowlers was Andre Russell with three for 42 and Azari Joseph two for 46. But here at Sabina Park, it's going to be Ryan John. To Brian, that's down the leg side. A nice collection there from wiki keeper Tevin Walker to skip and then dive to his left together. And then for the West Indies in that 
chase of 214. They actually got off to a blinding start with someone who you know, Keswick, that's Johnson Charles, and the Jamaican Brandon King. They put on 89 for the first wicket. But from 89 without loss, they slipped to 142 for five. And then the tide changed, eventually being restricted to 202 for eight. Brian John, full. There's an edge and dropped. A big moment early. They have been so good in the slip court and all much. The Volcanoes, Shamar Springer, springing to his left, but couldn't hold on. That should have been taken, Keswick. Should have been an easy catch. Knowing the ones that he took yesterday. Very low as well yesterday. Now this one is good height. Easy catch. Guess he's, a, guess he's still sleeping a bit. Ryan John finding the edge as usual. Full. With a hint of waist swing. Just couldn't hold on to that one, Springer. You say easy catch. They normally say there are no easy catches in the slips. But in terms of standards and the levels at this level, that is an easy catch. What we have seen from him as well yesterday in the slip. It's a lot harder. So for him, this one sh should have been easy. Ryan just probing around that food stump line. Sunil Lambris at first slip. Shama Springer, second. There's a gully. And Johan Jeremiah Skipper at point. And he continues and to get that outward movement, Ryan John. He has two slips and a fine gully. That's usually what he does with the ball because of his action, as we mentioned yesterday. Sort of a wrong arm action usually gets the ball moving outwards to right handers. Yeah. Gets it full as well. Full of you ball. You ball swings or seems a bit more. Still haven't seen Kenneth Denver as yet. Most we have seen of him is that he's feeling at mid on. Well, the Pacers are doing the job. They have been hitting good line, good lengths. Only one point or one part of the game we have seen the bowlers sort of lose their way a bit was when Ryan John was really trying to get that fifth wicket when Pete Salmon had a little bit of liking into him, but that wasn't too long yeah. before he decided, listen, I need to get back on this line and length, which he did. Got himself that five wicket. Congrats to him. He steams away. <laughs> and that is left alone by Nkuma Bonner to complete the first over of the day. An eventful over. Could have lost a wicket, the Scorpions. But luckily, Gordon Bryan survives. He's two from 11. And Bonner, 36 from 43. We're going to take a look at that slip chance again. It was right there. It, Let's see. John. He has a wicket already in this game. He got in this innings. Took five. He's now on six wickets in the contest. He took the wicket of Jermaine Black with the captain of the Scorpions yesterday. Incidentally, Shamar Springer took that catch. Diving away to his, his right. I think it was his left at the time. We're going to get a chance to see that missed opportunity. But it would have been the ideal start for the Volcanoes. We have been thinking about making early inroads to ensure that the Scorpions don't settle. Almost as if it got to him quicker than he expected. And those are normally difficult when the ball is that full. Because it comes off the bat very quickly. Almost as if the batter was digging it out. And Darius Martin is going to continue from the Michael Holding end. Took three wickets from that end yesterday. And that, that is the reason for me why I told you yesterday I prefer to see a batter come out. Obviously, that, that's just my opinion. Other people will do things differently because you'll want your better batter to start this morning because what will happen with a batter like Gordon Bryan there is only going to kill your run rate to some extent. 
yes, there, there, there's a whole day tomorrow, but you would want batters there who, who would score runs. Well, he's definitely trying to score now. That was full, and he was beaten outside the off stump. And I, I actually agree with that point because for you to come out of this defensive slumber, the scorpions that they've dug themselves into, you need to be a little bit more aggressive to put the pressure on the bowling unit. Get them thinking again. Get them challenged as to what is their next best option rather than have them bowling away, bowling at, away to someone who is probably going to push a nerdle because then he's almost like a sitting duck. Something Wait. that the, 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 the volcanoes will, will have to have in the back of their mind. It's not over yet. Good in swing out there from Martin. It's missing the off stump. Yeah, that was Almost close. missing the gloves of Tevin Walcott as well. Yeah, that one died a little bit before end. him, yeah. And it's almost as if, whoa, it almost crept along the ground. That was full. He did mention to me this morning that the one that he bowled to Chadwick Walton saw that kept a bit low. And it's the first one he saw that kept low in the entire game. Which means he's loving this wicket. The consistency in bongs. Spoke to the grungs, the grung staff this morning. The head grungs, man. Whipped away. Beautiful shot there from Gordon Bryant. And he's showing that he's out here to play his shots. Previous deliveries, he swung, he swung and missed. But now, angling into his pad. And that's where he got his first run yesterday. And that one was overpitched by Martin. Going for that big in-swinger. Overpitched and easily tucked away for a boundary. Always going to be easy picking at this level. Especially when you're going down the legs, down the leg side. Even though that he's showing that he's capable with the bat, you don't need a batter to start today's play. There's a loud appeal, but I think that's inside edge into the pad. And he's showing that he has been given a license here, Gordon Bryant. And maybe to chip away into this lead as well that the Volcanoes have. It's a massive deficit for the Scorpions. And that one is a full toss. He missed out. I guess Martin was trying to, to get that Yorker in. But I've seen Night Watchman come out and, and, and strike it around the park. But in my opinion, I think that I think that a batter out there would be a little bit easier for them. Not the best of stars from Darius Martin. The wayward first over. Two straight at times. Two full at times. and Didn't really cause much problems for Gordon Bryan who took a boundary off the over to complete the second over of the morning, the 20th. As we see a couple of the Jamaica women players, and that's the twin sisters, Kate Wilmot and her sister. Kate Wilmot is part of the West Indies women's program. And her sister is also part of the Jamaica team. They're in preparation for the regional championship. We also saw Carton Ball Jr., as this one from John is played back to mid on by Nkrumah Bon and Carton Ball Jr. has the most regional centuries for Jamaica in four day cricket. He has 12. He's also a part of the selection panel for this squad. And he's also the assistant coach for the women's team. Played several matches for the West Indies, Test and ODI. Also won the very first CPL with the Jamaica Tala was in 2013. Wide off the crease, takes the edge. Didn't carry to Jeremiah, who is at gully. And again, subtle change from Ryan John, just going wide off the crease. And with that slingy action, getting the ball to move away off the surface. And it moved pretty late to Nkrumah Bonner as well. Yeah, using up the crease. Shaped away, but soft hands from Bonner ensured that it didn't carry to 
Golly. And I think this is the wicket that the Volcanoes think they need the most in Krumah Bona. With all his experience, he would definitely need to remove him early if you want to put yourself in a more commanding position to try to finish this game today. That would be the ideal thing, or that's the way that the, the Volcano should be thinking now. Try to end this game today. Jamaica Scorpions will have other plans. And for them to fulfill that plan, this man at the crease and Koma Bono will have to stay there and score some runs like he did in that last game, second innings. And when I say last game, I mean the last game he played against the, the Volcanoes. Yeah. Here. Here in Jamaica as well, so. Could be deja vu. And it was a similar situation as well. They had a, a first innings deficit. Could be a little bit of deja vu. Yeah. For the betterment of the cricket, we'd love that. I think for the Volcanoes, they're not interested in, knowing, in seeing that. As you see, Daryl Cyrus, their substitute feeler for the Volcanoes. He's on for Sherman Lewis. Heard this morning that he picked up a little niggle. He didn't warm up either with the team. So a little bit of concern for the Volcanoes. He's their senior bowler. But Ryan John and Shamar is showing that they're capable as Enkoma Bonner guide this one down to third man. Wouldn't get a four though. Kimani Mellia skipper. Doing some chase. And that's the end of the over. Picking up two there, Enkoma Bonner to finish the over, which means that Darius Martin is going to have the first ball to Gordon O'Brien. So he's, the uh, uh, Scorpions, they trail by 99 runs now with Bonner on 38. And that's good insight there, kids, because it means the Volcanoes would be reduced by a bowler for a good period of time in this first session. Once he didn't warm up this morning, it's highly unlikely that he's going to be bowling within the first hour. Well, from listening to a few of the players he's looks like he has an injury that he might not come out for the rest of the day I'm not sure if he would be able to even play the next game the good thing though is that the volcanoes batting would be a bit stronger in the next game because then you have alec atenez and kevin hodge coming in on sunday and i'm sure they would come in with a bag of confidence Knowing that they're coming from the international level to the regional level. Kevin Hodge obviously scoring that 74 in that first test, I think, in Australia. Second test. Played some really good shots. Yeah. A very good. busy player. Such a pretty player when he's, was, when he's flowing. I can remember playing CPL with him at St. Lucia. David Warner was there that year. And how much David Warner liked to see him bat in the nets. David Warner once told him, you're the sweetest player I've ever seen in the nets, brother. <laughs> Poetry in motion, Mr. Coven Hodge. Yeah. Uh, Darius Martin. Poetry in motion as he runs away from the Michael Holding end. Doesn't force a shot from Gordon Bryan. But the information that Sherman Lewis might not be able to to play that missed opportunity is going to have some lingering thoughts in the minds of some of the players because that was a big chance to get in a fresh batter against a fresher bowling unit. We don't want this partnership to be prolonged and then Brian batting for a sustained period of time to, to tire out the, the bowling unit. So... For their sake, they were probably hoping for more chances. And Martin finally gets his radar right. It was a wayward first over. To be honest with you, I'm not too worried about the Volcanoes bowling now. Yeah. The 
the fact that Ryan John is showing that he can lead the attack as well. Shamar Springer doing well. And then Darius Martin came out in the second innings and showed what he can do with the ball. We haven't seen Kenneth Dembers yet. That Shadrach Discard who can bowl a bit of medium pace. I was about to mention him that you still have that medium pace option. You and can, then yeah. you also have that one come back sharp at Gordon O'Brien. As I was saying, then you have Kovim Hodge in the next game who can bowl that left arm spin. So I'm not too worried. Darius is doing well. But then you have Daryl Cyrus, who's a leg spinner, that substitute feeler. And there's also Kieran Katoy, who's also who also can bowl leg spin. He was actually a main leg spinner who can bat, but now yeah. he's more of a batter that can bowl leg spin. Obviously, after that injury in 2016, he had that issue with his ball and he couldn't really come over his front leg because of all those knee injuries and surgeries and stuff like that. So he was never the same. But what he decided to do is to work on his batting. He always could have hit the ball down the ground. Yeah. But just 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 a minute, cause it seems like Gordon Bryan is in some serious pain. That ball just now. I don't know if we can take a look at it again. The ball jacked back from Darius Martin seems to caught him on the wrist his left wrist and the physiotherapist is out there now trying to apply that magic spray and i hope all things are well with gordon Bryan. he's getting his helmet back on but that must have hurt are you a big fan of the magic spray didn't work in the magics for me <laughs> not sure what it, i don't know why they call it the magic spray never really work any magic for me mm. I can tell you one thing, who works at Magic for me over the years is Dennis Bayam, who's now the physio for the West Indies yeah. team. Well, he works on Magic on Shamar Joseph I as I can well. tell you one thing, his, his name should be Magic Bayam. Yeah. Because he works on Magic on, on me while I was playing for West Indies, playing for Winwood St. Vincent. So he did work some Magic. I'll tell you a little story. I can remember the first time he, he worked with the West Indies in terms of being a physio. West Indies selected a somewhat of an under-23 team to go to Canada to play that oh, first G20. G20. Yeah, I remember that. And Roddy Eswick, the head coach, yeah. when he got there, he realized the amount of injuries that he had on tour. And he was scared that his players might not finish the tournament. <laughs> and Dennis Byam looked at him and said, listen, they're going to finish and can play another tournament as long as I'm here. And he worked with every single player the guys finished the tournament, got to the final, shocked every single team. Yeah. Because everyone thought that this would have been a push pushover. That opened doors for Sheriff in Rutherford, Fabian Allen. Derville Green. Yeah. Obed McCoy was in that team as well. And Anthony Bramble was part of it as well. I no remember that team. Martin. But I can remember also, when we had team meeting, I was in that tournament, I was playing for Toronto Nationals. When we had meetings and we're talking about or having conversations about other teams, when we get to that team, we used to just skip. Skip. <laughs> They're no threat. <laughs> They're no threat. But after times, everybody like, a lot of guys. Yeah, Rutherford won an acre of land, I think, at the last staging. So, salute to Dennis Byam out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who is now the physio for the West Indies cricket team. And that's the end of the over. Darius Martin finishes that over. 84 for four, the Jamaica Scorpions. And they have added 10 runs, well, eight runs this morning. And they trail by 100. They trail the, Scorp the Volcanoes by 182, but they are now trailing by 98 runs. So they have to get 98 more runs to force the Volcanoes to bat again. And you'd want to believe if they bat out this session, if they bat out this session, you'd, you'd expect them to be just on around that, that 98 more runs. If Bonner scores at the rate that he continues to score at, I don't think they want to lose more than a wicket or two, though. Bonner gets a full one and drives it through extra cover. Sweeper cover is giving chase, so to his mid-off. They come together. And limited to two runs. Should have been a little bit more positive in the running. That should have easily been three. Solazano racing around from deep point. 
where Cyrus, he said, is at mid-off, had to come around. Pleasant drive, though. Over pitch from Ryan John, and he's just searching to, for that outside edge, searching for that chance to get the two slips and a goalie involved. Good chase by Cyrus, the one of the faster runners on the Volcanoes team. As a physio runs out again to check on Gordon O'Brien. Seems like he's in a bit of discomfort. He's feeling more pain. And just let's see if we can see where he's administering now. If it's his toes or it's the same wrist. I heard him saying to Nkrumah Bona that I'm going to continue. He's, a, he's part of one of the toughest units in the country. He can't be soft and be in the army. So must tell you that he's in some serious pain. It has a full blow onto his arm, to be quite honest. And the first good thing for him is that it's not his bowling hand. But also, the, that left hand is very important in bowling as well. Because if it doesn't stay up, everything goes wayward. And he's getting his gloves back on. You can see that he's in pain, though. Took a couple of tablets just now. So let's see if the pain wears off for the right hander. Ryan John bowling to Nkuma Bona. Still probing around that fifth stump line, Ryan John. I just think he has to be patient. He has enough runs in the bag to play with. Don't get greedy and don't overcompensate trying to search for that wicket. Bonner is someone who can bat long, but you can still test his patience outside that off stump. And he has the protection of the sweeper cover on the boundary. The key for them was always to get at least three wickets or so before they get to 100 runs. Yeah. They are four now. Jamaica Scorpion is still on 86. If they can get an early in roll here, or can get a wicket before lunch. That will set up things even better for them. I just hope that they're not too complacent and get too overconfident. I think that the game is going to end today. Cricket still have to be played. Absolutely. Solidly defended there by Nkuma Bona. And once you start to think about what's next, that's when pressure starts to reach and that's when you miss all the good things that you were doing and end up handing the advantage to the opposition. You have to stay in the moment and play the situation. It's all about awareness, being aware of the situation, not getting overconfident and play the situation just like how it's supposed to be played. Continue to hit that line, that length, that gain you success in the first innings. Yeah, that three-quarter length. And the Jamaican Scorpion batters as well spoke about it after the first innings. They were saying that they didn't get a drive. The guys were just hitting that length where you have to play at it, that top of our some length. So about 85% of their deliveries was on top of that off some which is very, very good. good. Their coach was very good at that as well, Mr. Peters. A servant to Winwood Islands cricket. Played that solitary test for West Indies. Left arm pacer, but he always probed away, probed away. He would bowl all day if he could. He, him and Dighton Butler, Butler was like yeah. the Courtney Walsh and the Ambrose for Windward Islands for many years. You don't have the pace though, but yeah. I'll Accuracy. tell you one thing. Work very accurate, consistent, yeah. all day. Learned so much from Dighton Butler when I just decided that I wanted to be a fast bowler. Yeah. But that's the end of the over there. Ryan John finishing that over. Quiet one as well. Score is 87 for four. And he's now a uh, umpire, no? Yes, he I is. Won I wonder if he still gives those advice to fast bowlers whenever he comes around a couple of them or, or two. Uh, definitely. Always a guy that 
wants to see better, wants to see good cricket. He's now in Bangladesh. Well, he's probably traveling still, but he's going to Bangladesh. He left yesterday to do the BPL. So it's good to see that he's traveling, doing his empire. He's really good. He's in the CPL as well. First year of him doing CPL, he, he did the finals. That was a COVID year. In the CPL. Mm. Wouldn't it be surprised if he's added to that international panel pretty soon? Yeah. But I can but remember playing cricket, the first time playing cricket in, in Kingston. Not in Kingston. Not Kingston. Kingston. Yeah. So capital in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I can remember no one looking at so, No one day you're, so, you're such a big fan of Jamaica. <laughs> Close names. But you can continue after this delivery from Darius Martin. Pulled away with authority from Gordon Bryan. That's a wonderful shot and it goes all the way for six. Bang. Short from Martin. Rocked back. Wow, if you thought he was a mug with a bat, that was a shot of authority, a shot of class as well. Well, the good thing about that shot, he played it with a lot of confidence. Went all the way for six. Darius Martin, I think about what he's doing here. They have taken down the run rate, but Gordon O'Brien is showing some yeah, 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 Some yeah, fight yeah, as he guides yeah, this one down to short third man. Well, well done there by Skipper Melius. Could have been a mix up as well because Brian wanted that single. Bonner was not interested. He had to wait to see if it passed the man at point. Good dive from the captain. So I was giving you the story with Dyke Butler. So I was at mid off and I was looking at his run up. And if he bowled 10 overs, every single footstep is in the same place. <laughs> and I was like... S smash through, extra cover by Gordon Bryan. He's on the attack now and he gets a boundary. No need to chase that, Kimani Melius. You're not going to get it. It's another boundary for the right-hander. And that's a lot of power in that shot. No signs of that injury that he sustained earlier in the morning. He was dropped of the second delivery of the day. And he's now added 14 runs since. And that's a nice shot again from Gordon Bryan. Got on top of the bounce as well. Current run rate just creeping up over four now. So the Volcanoes can't get too complacent here. They have to continue to hit their shop. So... Two boundaries hitting this over of short deliveries. And he goes hard. Slices off the, the outer half of the bat. It's going to go close to the boundary. It's slowing up, but it will touch it now. More success for Gordon Bryan. He's having probably the game of his dreams. Four wickets in the first innings. And he has been trusted with the role of survival last night. And now to expand his arms and express himself. And he has now added 31 runs with Nkrumah Bonner. As the Jamaica Scorpions, 100 comes up. It's 101 for four. With one delivery to come in over number 24. And, and I think Darius Martin is overcomplicating the, uh, the efforts now. He needs to find that length that he was bowling to Chadwick yesterday that got him that wicket. The same length that you mentioned that top of half some length because the first two boundaries was short ball. One pull to the mid-wicket boundary for six. The other one was punch. That one had a bit of wit on it. Punch through extra cover for four. And this one a bit too full. And Gordon just throwing his bat at that one over cover again. No! Still a bit too short. Need to be a little bit more fuller. Hit that top of half some length trying to find the edge. But a dot ball to finish that over for Darius Martin. Score is now 101 for four of 24 overs. They trail by 81. And I'm not going to leave until they finish that story with Dighton Butler. So yeah, I was, I was, I was looking at him. I was at mid-off or mid-on. I can't remember fully, but I can remem remember 
looking at him running up. And at the end of his 10 overs or so, the footstep was just, everything was in the same place. And I was like, how do you do that? He said, repetition. Mm. Being able to understand what you do and be able to do it over a longer period of time or a long period of time. He said, I can do this with my eyes closed. I was like, show me. <laughs> and he did it with his eyes closed. Yeah. Same spot every single time. And that's what Ryan is trying to do. Bowl in the same spot every single time. Or grouping. The grouping for Ryan John has been really good for the entire game. That's the reason why he, he has six wickets in the game now. Yeah, and that you get a chance to look at this again. The return from, from John. Some frustration coming out there as you see the fans getting involved, the women's cricketers. That's Chanel Henry in the blue and purple top. Mm. They're getting engaged with the, with the cricket and they sense that the Scorpions are having a shift in momentum here. Oh, that was late from Bono, almost sneaked under the bat. But Ryan John, the very first ball of the over, ball driven back to him and he wasn't too pleased about it. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like this. And they're just waiting to see when the replay comes up to explain to the viewers. Yeah, it's coming up now. He picked it up. No harm, you think? Because he was probably just trying to tell Bonner to stay back. You're coming too far, too far forward here. And what he need to do is just continue to do what he's doing in terms of hitting those errors. Getting him to play every single delivery. Consistency helped him in the first innings. We saw what happened when he was trying to look for that fifth wicket. He don't want to get flustered now. We just need to concentrate and continue to hit that top of off some length. That one sneaks through again. That one came back. Or the one that Kesley keeps reminding us that John just slides on. He stays closer to the wicket. Keep the angle to the slided pass at half storm. So he's a really skilled bowler. Sometimes he runs wide, brings it into you, and we swings the ball. But then sometimes you just run a little bit closer and go straight on. So it's just a little bit of adjustment in terms of where he lands. When I thought about a single, that's not even a half a run. Coming to the end of over number 25. By the way, the combined campuses and colleges, they're struggling against the Barbados Pride. The Barbados Pride, they lost a day. Well, the match, they lost a day in the match. Not just the Pride, but both teams. And they made upwards of 300. They made 344 for eight declared. Combined campuses and colleges, they're 50 for four. John Fuller to Bonner. That closes out over number 25 at 101 for four for the Scorpions. Still trailing by 81 runs. And the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, their match with the Guyana Harpy Eagles in Connery. That game is highly unlikely that it's going to start before lunch. Well, it won't start because there's only 26 minutes to go before lunch. Mm. Based on our information, there was seepage under the covers from the heavy rainfall yesterday. There, there's also other information. <laughs> and we get that, that, <laughs> that the covers were disturbed <laughs> as well overnight. <laughs> and the Leeward Island Hurricanes, they are pulling things back against the West Indies Academy. The Hurricanes, they were dismissed for 137 in their first innings. Yesterday was washed out. But now the Academy team 151 for 8. Top scorer so far is Ebiki Joseph, 42. Joshua Bishop, he has 27 not out with Ashmi Ned, both left arm spinners. Jeremiah Louis, I think you know him well, 4 for 25. Javier Spencer, 2 for 23. Colin 
Archibald, that's the left arm pace of one for 43. And Rakim Jimbo Cornwall, one for 30. Those are the wicket takers for the Hurricanes. I'm going to tell you the wicket takers for the Barbados Pride in a short while. As we see Kenneth Demba to bowl his very first delivery in this match. The first ball of spin for the Volcanoes. Akeem Jordan has, a wick, has two wickets. Shaim Moda has one. And Russian Primus. He has the wicket of Romario Greaves. The not-out man is Shakir Paris with 24 along with the experienced Jonathan Carter who has 14. And Primus is one of those cricketers that I have a lot of time for as well. I think he has a skill set that is rare. Very unique skill set, Primus. But he has to contend with additional people for those roles. You see Demba getting ready to bowl to Gordon Bryan, who has given away his cap or his helmet. He's going to be facing the off spinner. And push back to Demba. Okay, Demba just started with a backward point, cover, mid off, long on. He has a short leg in, short mid wicket. Not really a 45, somewhat a backward square and a deep mid wicket as well. Darren Cyrus. Rather flat and fast to the right handed Brian. You want him to be a little bit slower though, Keswick. A bit slower in the air. Give the ball some time to do its work. Oh, he's hitting him on the pile and there's a loud appeal, but Brian is well outside the off stump and he's far forward as well. That's, Big stride in. That's more like what you would want from your off spinner. That's the line and the length that you would want. Saw so Pete Salmon picking up three. must say that Gordon Bryan looks assured as to what he's trying to accomplish here. He's very decisive with his steps. Far forward. Defends again to complete a made nova from Kenneth Demba. And he has a very unusual bowling style. Kenneth Demba takes a couple of hops. Hops, leaps. Leaps. And then he takes another step before he gets to the crease. 101 for four as we see Nikita Miller floating around the boundary edges. He hasn't sat down all game. Well, as an assistant coach, the team is performing the way how they are. You would never sit comfortable. Always be on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Hands on. Loves, loves his cricket, Nikita Miller. Sort of like Spinner Brown this morning out of Jamaica. Odin. Odin Brown. He's also one of the selectors. So him along with Carlton Ball Jr. and Randy Nelson, who is part of St. Catherine CC, they are the selectors for this squad. It's a sh interim selection panel. Remember him playing for Jamaica as well. In tandem with Nikita Miller. If you if you were set 150, you can bet your house, car, and land that the two would probably defend it. Yeah. You know his nickname? No idea. Okay. Surprising. I thought you were Jamaican. I have a little <laughs> bit of it in me. <laughs> Actually, I want to move to Jamaica. I heard that the, the Jamaican government is trying to put some money into the, mus the, the, the movie industry here. Oh, you're an actor now? I'm a good actor. Oh, really? Actually, really good. Oh. You've never seen me. No. Then they can watch a premiere and then you, you just make your, your best offer there. I have to talk to a few people that I know here in Jamaica. 
probably call up Teddy Buckshot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 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 Marmali One Love movie, something that fans should go out and to go out and look at. Just something that the Jamaican people would love and enjoy. Summer Springer is on, and that's his second delivery. He was told by umpire Williams to get off the pitch after his first delivery, running onto the danger area. Yeah. So, wait and see. I think this is the first time Springer is bowling from this, the Courtney Walsh end. Took his three wickets from the Michael Holding end. Gordon Bryan took his four his four wickets from this, the Courtney Walsh end. Ryan John took his wicket yesterday from this end, but Darius Martin got his three wickets from the Michael Holding end. John took his first five wickets yes, in the first day from the end that Springer is bowling from. So I guess most of the wickets to the Pacers have come from this, the Courtney Walsh end. That's down the leg side, inward movement from Springer. Really impressed Lake with by, yeah. Kimani Melius and the way how he rotates his bowlers, how he uses his bowlers, and it really worked for him, or it really worked for him. Obviously, they have Sunil Ambris to help him rally the troops. Kieran Katoy is out there now. And I think which means that the two feelers to substitute out their feeling. I Jeremy Silazano is off the field. Yeah, I was looking for him. He was at deep cover. We we'll just hope that he's okay. We don't want any injuries in the first game of the 40 season, long season. It's longer now because w Cricket West Indies have just added CCC and the West Indies Academy. Which I think is a good implementation. Seems like he's fine because he's back out now and that's the end of the over. Yeah. End of a Shamar Springer over. Quiet one. Can't get too bored, the Volcanoes. They're in a good position. Really just one bad over from the Volcanoes and one good over from four, the Scorpions. That over that went for 14 from Gordon Bryan. Umpire Williams just trying to speed up Mar Lewis. Over it has been slow this morning. Only nine overs bowled in 44 minutes. Just hope that the captain know their certain penalties. Exactly. Towards time wasting. I don't think any of the days. The first day, 82 overs were bowled. Yesterday, 85. But they're well ahead, so I yeah. don't think there would be any problems there. Yeah. They're in control of the game. You can afford to lose a match fee if you if you win the game though. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's when you lose and the match fees go the match fees go. <laughs> Double punishment. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, they're fine. They're on contract. They're okay. Going down, babe. Good work, my boy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And 
September, getting into his operation here. I was, I saw a, an interesting take yesterday with one of the Pakistani under 19 players. I'm going to ask if you, you used to trick your parents. A big sweep shot from Bonner and oh no, it's that man again, Solazano. Look out, Sully. He's winded. Yeah. He's not had the greatest of luck in that position. He made his test debut against Sri Lanka. Feeling a short leg. That was swept with some power. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Got a sorry for you, Solo. In the rip. Oh. That has that to hurt. Got to hurt. Yeah, it has to hurt. I'm sorry, Solo. You were off for a little bit. <laughs> Went back out for a blow to the ribs. They're seeing this, the funny side to it, but I'm telling you that there's no I, funny side to it. I mean, we're laughing here now, but I'm telling you, it's got to be painful. Yeah. You know it's serious when you see that other physio from the other team runs out. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's tending to... To his, his player. Yeah. He's still struggling with that left wrist. Here we it's go again. It's a good blow. Yeah. You know that there's a, there's a little bone right across the hip right across that you're region. the biologist student yeah yeah, yeah there, there's a little the hip bone across the pelvic there's a bone right there looks pretty close to it i'm hoping that it's not hitting it didn't hit that bone because if it did he would be in some pain he will have to come off and he is i mean i'm smiling now but oh my it's, it's not, not the, it's, it's not the greatest sight because we remember what happened to him on his debut, got hit in the head, feeling at that same position. I'm going to tell you something first. Yeah. That I wouldn't be feeling there again. Yeah, I would tell the captain I'm over. And one thing, well, playing youth cricket coming up, when you're the youngest on the, on the team, the they newest. give you the helmet. <laughs> or the newest. Yeah. I can remember um, when you're doing that, He's under the bat, the, the, the senior guys will tell you, pay your dues. Yeah. He's in some serious pain though, Jeremy Solazano. Yeah, it's sad for him. He would be off for a bit. I don't think we're seeing him until after lunch, if possible. Yeah, he's in some pain walking up the stairs. Yeah, we hope he's okay. We hope he's okay. I, I was saying that I saw this clip of one of the Pakistani under 19 players where he was so devoted in becoming a cricketer that he used to tell his parents everything that was wrong. So, he didn't want to go to school. So what he would do, which I didn't know, is that he would put an onion under his pillow. And the onion forces him to have a high temperature, which would suggest that he has fever. So every time he would have to do his exams, he would just put the onion there because it would clash with playing cricket. He would just put the onion there and tell his mother that he's not feeling well. And then he would go away because she goes to work and he would go away and play cricket. And Condor, <laughs> he's now playing for the, for the, for the Pakistan under-19 team. They missed out on the final, but he's living his dream as there's a loud appeal. Well, I'm hoping that pays off. Yeah. You're a student. You, you, you did biology. That's, you couldn't skip classes and do biology. No, my mom would. <laughs> my mom beat me once in front of everyone at the school. It was an embarrassing time. You lied to her? I didn't lie. The grades were low. The grades wasn't low either. <laughs> Bonner pulls out the reverse sweep to Demba. And that should get to the boundary. It's a long chase for Jeremiah. He gives it up early. Surprising shot from Nkrumah Bonner. But effective. The reverse sweep. And another boundary this morning. Breaking the shackles. To complete... The 28th over at 106 for four, the Scorpions. And they're finding the boundary at will now. And they have added 32 runs so far. So I was saying the grades wasn't low. It was just that when you, you, when you, when you have parent teach a day. <laughs> and you talk too much in class. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then the teacher comes up and says, listen, good student, usually do his work, but he talks too much. Yeah. So you're one of those students that yeah, yeah. That's I think I'm here. has potential, but easily distracted. 
Why do you think I'm here sitting? I don't know. Talk too much. No. <laughs> <laughs> Spring up to Gordon Bryan and he's getting that behind point. And Bonner is so conscious of not getting out and preserving his wicket. And he gets a single in the end, Gordon Bryan, who insists that it was an easy single because it went to the left of Kimani Melios, the captain at point. And they punch gloves now and takes the score up to 107 for four. I don't remember getting beating for school. I could remember. Yeah. It was a normal thing. <laughs> I know it's a normal backhand. <laughs> It's normal, normally the backhand I'll feel. <laughs> Why don't you shut up in class, you know? Yeah. You know my mom, my mom played cricket for St. Vincent as well. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. My sister as well played cricket for St. Vincent. All the other males played football. It's probably the only male cricketer, male that take up cricket and take it serious in my family. In your family, yeah. Everybody has studied football. But I'm happy because I'm sitting here today. But now, I really realized the reason why I was talking so much in class. <laughs> it was getting closer to your dream. And spring up, angles that one into the pads of Bonner. He's forward. I think Bonner has gotten the pace of the wicket now. He's willing to put in the hard yards for his team. He's scored his 45th run. No, 108 for four. 28 and a half overs both. So the Scorpion scoring at over three and a half runs per over. Don't think that is their main goal now. Their first ambition is to get to 182 to ensure that the Volcanoes bat again. It's on the pad of Brian, there's no square leg. He's deep. And they get a single. Well, that should be a leg by. Score is 109 now for four. <laughs> Bit straighter from Shamar Springer. Attacking the stump this time of Enkoma Bonner. 35 runs added so far this morning. They're probing away nicely, doing it safely. That is close. That is very close. And I think Bonner is going to be going. That looks straight. It looked adjacent. Jackie, Jackie Williams thought so as well. And from here, I must say I agree with her. And even if he got bat on it, Bonner, the man at Gully took the ball on the full. So he would have been gone caught behind. But I just thought that one was hitting back towards the stubs. That looks adjacent. Sorry. It looks close. I don't know about you, Kez. He goes for 45. And it's 109 for 5. A massive breakthrough for the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Really well ball from Spring. As I mentioned, the delivery before. Him attacking the stumps. He did it again. I mean, as, as a coach, you would you would be upset that he's gone, but you will have to accept that it was a good delivery. Finishing the over with a wicket. Shamar Springer. It's a successful over. The man that the volcanoes would want to see leaving the pitch. And in come Abijay Mansing. As you can see, the coach, head coach Kenroy Peters and the manager Liam Sebastian both played for winners around the same time as well. 
So it's good to see ex-players taking up the roles of manager, coaches, assistant coaches, physios, and stuff like that around the region. Well, I think they have been forced to be 13 or 14. But they have been yeah, short they of forced players. to do it. As you know, Shamal Lewis, Shema, Sherman Lewis, sorry. Sherman Lewis is off due to a small niggle. And then a while ago, Jeremy Salazano, a blow to his hip. Nkoma Bono doing. Gordon Bryan goes hard to mid off. Nkoma Bono doing that job. The skipper himself placed himself at short leg. Can it Demba now? Takes point out to Gordon Bryan. Realize the, the wicket is giving him some assistance. Assistance, so he has no place. Shamar Springer. Leg slip. He's getting the purchase that he needs. Started with the point. Get comfortable. And now he's in. I think a big shot is coming soon. That one is short to Brian. He's back on his thumbs and just taps it onto the pitch. He does some guarding. I think even though the Scorpions would budget for a wicket or two, I don't think they budgeted for the wicket of Nkrumah Bona first. Psychological blow for the Volcanoes as that one comes off the outer half of the bat of Brian. What is through for a single? It's 110 now for five. Abhijay Man Singh will be taking his first delivery of this second innings. Well, they're still trailed by 72 runs. And the Volcanoes It's already gone half. Taking half of the wickets. Kenneth Demba. Another good over. That's his third over now. Just five runs. I think it's going to be one more over before the first over is completed. So looking at the bowling card there for the Volcanoes, Sherman Lewis, four overs. He's off the field. 25 runs. Darius Martin, 10 overs, three wickets, 48. Ryan John, nine overs, 21 runs, one wicket. And Shumar Springer coming in this morning, four overs, 19 runs, one wicket. And Kenneth Demba, just five runs off. His three overs. No wicket as yet. But so far, he's showing that he can be consistent. He can hit his errors. It's going to be Springer who got the big scalp of Nkrumah Bonner to Gordon Bryan. Solid in his defense is Bryan. 22 from 45 now. And he started the day with one run. He's added 21. Bulk of the runs, they have gone to him. Bonner added only nine. He had a few leg buys as well. Brian looks pretty easy. Mm. Quite compact as well. Inching up to the first hour of play, the third day. 
Shamar Springer attacking the stump a little bit more in the second innings. The first innings he was keeping it just outside the line of fourth stump, fifth stump. But you would normally hear shouts from the Windward Island Volcanoes players. Protect your figures, protect your figures. That one, that comes one. back, yeah. Very sharp. It was close. He was thinking about opening up his arms, Gordon Brand. And then he realized it was coming back at him very quickly. Tucked him up. He's been in the wars this morning, got hit on the left wrist. Hit on the thigh pad. No, he's hit, he's hit in the inner groin. So something that I've noticed with the uh, Windward Island Volcanoes over the years. There's another loud appeal. He goes for the dance. Shamar Springer. But he's not getting any favors from Jacqueline Williams. He's distraught. He can't believe it. You can see the way how he appealed. He was full of confidence knowing that that one is close. Jacqueline Williams unmoved. Yeah, he did the stroke broad there. Shamar Springer just ran off. Was That's so it. convinced that he was out. Look at it again. Oh my. Your eyes are better than mine, Kes. I don't know. You tell me. My eyes are better than yours, but you know what happened? You're, you're, you're good at putting your words together better than me. <laughs> I think that's Plum. <laughs> it's Springer again. Edge again. But this one goes through the slips. And Ryan John, you can't blame him. He's not putting his leg in that. He's a bowler. And it flies into the boundary for four and Springer. Salt into the wound there for the fast bowler. Another boundary. Eventful over. Finishes that over with a boundary. It's now jinx break. Yeah. Windward Island Volcanoes. They're in, they're in charge here. Gordon Bryan and Abijay Mansing at the crease. Shamar Springer finishing that over with a lot of shouts. Still trailed by 68. After the drinks break, we'll see how the Windward Island Volcano approach their bat, their bowling, and we'll see how the Scorpions will approach their batting after this water break. Yeah. 114 for five. They've added 40 runs where they have lost the important wicket of Nkuma Bono. We take a break and we'll be back here at Savannah Park pretty quickly.
All right, welcome back. This is the second hour of the third day. Between the Winner Islands Volcanoes, who are on top on the host Jamaica Scorpions, with Kenneth Dembo bowling to Abhijay Mansing. Mansing yet to score with Gordon Bryan, who has 26 at the non strikers end. And he's going to be joined by Kimberly Forbes. With the Scorpions still trailing the Volcanoes. He's bowled 3.1 overs, Dembo. Five runs conceded, a boundary and a single. And Mansing drives that one forcefully back along the pitch. It's 114 for five. So trailing by 68, the, the Scorpions. Dembo gets through his overs pretty quickly. Well, the, the Volcanoes here are uh, faster, taking the wicket of Bonner. Well, it's the second time for Springer to send Bonner back to the dugout. Got him in the first inning, so one and now for 45. And the Scorpions, they would have wanted him to stick around to at least get the 182 runs off the board. That was sharp bounce and turn there for Dembo. By signal by the umpire. Two of them. So Mansing with a short leg. A leg slip and a slip around him. And dead ball is signal. That one slipped out of the hands of Dembo. Look again at this replay. Uh, reload. <laughs> But I must, I must say that Gordon Bryan, it seems as if he went into his room last night and did some visualization to say what he's going to come here today and do. He's really putting up a fight. 26 from 50 deliveries. The 32 overs come to an end and the score is at 116 for five. And saw him get some boundaries here this morning. He picked up four fours already and just a six. Uh, see Andre Coley here for a second day. Seems to be Dr. Mansing, the father of uh, Abhijay Mansing. Yeah. Loves his cricket, Dr. Mansing. Also the head of, the, well, the dean of the Faculty of Sport at the University of the West Indies, Mona, also plays an integral part in the combined campuses and colleges team. Also a director here for the Jamaica Cricket, Cricket Association. And the gather that he's on the slate for the challenger. This is full. Shamar Springer to Gordon Bryan. He's on the slate for Dr. Donovan Bennett, who is challenging Billy Heaven. Wilford Billy Heaven. And he's to run as a second vice president. But Shamar has been he he has been having a good spell from the first innings. He where he picked up three wickets. He's now picked up one. He picked up the wicket of Nkuma Bana again. He's twelve runs from the over so far with just a wicket. Nice delivery outside of the off stump from him. Been very consistent on the off stump. That Springer, well, before we went to the water break, that delivery that struck Garden Bryan and the pod, he runs away. Seems as if, seems as if he was going to go to Norman Man, the international airport, but the, the, the pilot, Jackie Williams, did not lift the finger. He was totally disappointed. from Springer, how is that? Not outside umpire Jackie Williams. But it's a wonderful day here today in Kingston, Jamaica. It's pretty hot. Just a slight headwind blowing across the ground. So 
116, they're trailing by another 66 runs. Gets the inner half of the bat, does Brian. He's looking for two. Tells Man Singh to come back comfortably done and brings the score up to 118 for five. Takes Gordon Bryan to 28. I think the longer he bats, don't have to say the cliche, the more runs he will score, but also creates more problems for the Volcanoes because the more assertive batters will be Mansing and Morris and someone to come. This is Fuller from Springer, who dropped Gordon Bryan this morning with the second delivery of the day. Yeah, and the Scorpions would want him to stick around to at least get the remaining runs. To and this partnership here is consists of nine runs now, and I must say that they are rotating the strike. And Brian is fit, hustling all the time to push for two, even when he was batting with Bonner. And the over come to an end. A 33 over is gone. It is 118 for five. They trail by another 64 runs. Just two runs coming from that over from Springer. Chadwick Walton, he's gone for 20. Brown and Mackenzie Duck, Bonner, 45. German Blackwood, 16. Walton didn't get a chance to shine in the second innings and also German Blackwood. You see in the harbor, looks pretty relaxing over there. Then ball again to Man Singh, who hasn't scored as yet. That's his ninth delivery. He's waiting on Demba. There's a loud shout for catch, but that is going to go close to the boundary. It's going downhill. Ryan John, who is feeling a slip, the vice captain, retrieves and limits the batting pair to two runs. So Mansing is off the mark. And the Scorpions are 120 now for five. And still trying to get to that 182. Mansing is solidly behind that delivery. Seems to make up his mind pretty early what he's going to do, whether to be going back or forward. It's forward again. And that one is worked to mid-wicket. The score remains at 120 for five. Man Singh does a little lap. It passes his leg, slipping. Shamar Springer. Mm. Descartes does the running. Two more runs. And that's good work there from Abhijay Man Singh. Mm. Deflecting. And gets two more runs to take him up to four. And it's now 122 for five. Quick over completed there. 34 overs gone. The score is 122 for five. With a current run rate of 30, I mean 366. Six. So Brian, his highest first class score is 42. Now he's on 28 from 56. And just some updates from around the region. The combined campuses and colleges, 88 for four. Shakir Paris, he's now 44. And with him is Jonathan Carter, 25. They're in... Response to 344 for eight. 
against the Barbados Pride, and that's at Chedwin Park in Spanish Town, Jamaica. The, well, it's now 89 for 5. While the West Indies Academy at lunch, they were dismissed for 177 against the Windward Islands Volcanoes, 137. So they have a 40 run lead. Neither team getting a batting point there. While the game between the Guyana Harpy Eagles and the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force has been delayed. And we understand that the covers were disturbed overnight, which resulted in the pitch getting wet as this one is full from Gordon Bryant to Gordon Bryant by Shamar Springer another dot delivery if, if you look at the body language of Gordon Bryant here uh, Foster he's very confident mindful of what's happening around him not going to give his wicket away just like that This is straight. That has to be it. No. Not from Jackie Williams. <laughs> Springer can't believe it again. Looking at the replay, he shuffles across. Well, it seems as if it was going to drift down the leg side. Jackie Williams says, not out. Good shout again. I don't think they were as confident as the previous shout. Gordon Bryan survives again. You can give the umpire the benefit of the doubt that that one was a little bit high, but it also was straight. Let's see what Springer serves up this time. And this one is dabbed into the, the slips by Gordon Bryan. 34 and a half overs ball in the Jamaica Scorpions innings. They batted only 41 in the first inning so they have batted a combined 75 and a half overs while the volcanoes batted more than 100 overs for three 300 plus runs remarkable difference that tells the tale of the game could be that the volcanoes bowled better but i also believe that they have batted way better than the scorpions definitely the three four dots in, from springer over so far 14 for one in 6.4 overs it is the confident garden brand who is on strike not afraid to drive it's garden brand that one. And I think he's been patient here, in respect the good deliveries, and whenever he gets the chance to free his arms, he's going to do that. Struck down the pad twice by Springer. <laughs> Says wait, Garden Brian, as that one completes. Over number 35 at 122 for five, the Scorpions, they trail by 60 runs. Well, we are seeing here that Haley Matthews appointed as Barbados Royals Girls Cricket Club Global Ambassador. She got Cricket of the Year. And yet, uh, yes, I, the, uh, T20 cricket of the year. Yeah, T20. Yesterday, Keswick, he was talking about track and field. We see uh, Shelly and Fraser Price has announced her that this uh, retirement, that this will be her final of Olympics, boy, 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 boy. which will be in Paris this year. Legend. As them Bob goes to Man Singh. Continues to be defiant. The right hand up. Go some leg spin as well, Man Singh. 
Waits on Demba, who has been economical. 5.2 overs, none for nine. Looking for his first wicket. He's getting bounce. Not extremely tall, but has decent height. Yes. Not the same height as a Shillingford. Who did so well for Win Winwards. No, the Winwood Islands Volcanoes in the franchise system. In the first innings, the Volcanoes, they only use four bowlers. No, they have used up five. There's another chance of a well, shout of catch him, but Man Singh nullifies any threat by playing with soft hands and he watches the turn off the surface because it's slow. And that completes the 36th over at 122 for five. Man Singh four from 20. And Brian, 28 from 62, he's going to be facing Shamar Springer, who already has the ball in hand. And has taken a wicket, the only wicket this morning to fall, that, has, that is Nkuma Bonner for 45. The other wicket going to Ryan John, while there were three wickets for Darius Martin. John's wicket also came yesterday, the last wicket of the day. It was a pivotal wicket as well, wicket of Captain Jermaine Blackwood who was threatening to take the game away from the Volcanoes with a few counter-attacking shots. Counter-punches, had a couple of uppercuts, drives, cuts, pulls, all of that in 16. And Springer is ready and so to his umpire, Jacqueline Williams. Brian, who is on strike... Another 60 runs. They trail by another 60 runs, the Scorpions. Brian is on 28 from 63. I guess if, if they continue to rotate the strike here and bat patiently of Jerome, they will be able to get the 60 runs and have the Volcanoes to go in and bat again. Or maybe get some runs on the board that they will think they can defend with their bowlers. Yeah, that's, that's what they're going to be thinking here. I think if the Scorpions bat out the day, that means they'll be leading by upwards of 100 from here. Based on the scoring rate that they're operating at now. They'll be over 280 for the day. That one nips back again from Springer. Brian saw it late and he has done his job as a night watchman, if you're being honest with his approach. But he's now set out his stall to play a critical role for the Scorpions in digging into this deficit. Climbing his team out of the hole. Mm, a spot of bother. 122 for five. And he goes hard and he goes one bounce to the man at short mid wicket. He was in the air for some time but didn't carry. I'm trying to make out the number on the back there. Look, looks like Shadrach Descartes. Didn't carry at all. Has to be mindful, Gordon Bryan, that he has to go over the ball when he's driving. Presents an opportunity. Yes, it was Shadrach Descartes, 57 in his back. Yeah, and you notice with Bryan, once the ball left the bat, he's, he's going to try and hustle for a run. He just wants to continue to have the scoreboard ticking. Another, they trail by another 59. So even though the boundaries are not coming in, they will have to just try and maintain that rotation. One thing, one thing says wait. 
Plays that one in the V. Quick play it even straighter. Yeah, he quickly shouted, wait, because he knows that Gordon is quick and he's going to be on a go. So he had to say, wait, immediately. The spectators are coming in, though. That completes over number 37 at 123, 4, 5. And I have to bring you up to date with the scorecard. In Kumabwana, 45. The top score so far, Gordon Bryan has 29. See a few people in the north stand. That is the Collie Smith wing of the north stand a few of the elderly gentlemen here says so Dembo who is continuing now they wouldn't mind picked up a wicket but garden brand he's well set at the crease Brian punches hard and says Yemen, Yemen in the Jamaican deep accent, <laughs> which means it's okay, let's go. And he gets a single, brings up his 30th run. Brian has an intention, and the intention is to try and get the, the remaining runs, the remaining 58 runs now. And he thinks that they can do it. Dembo is bowling too quickly for my liking here. Just to tempt Gordon Bryan, especially with mid-off up. Too flat, too easy for him to defend off the back foot. It's the easiest thing to do. Well, the wiki keeper loves it. Because they have a plan. But I think Bryan is so mindful. He's not giving There's a chance here. No. Bounced into the ground. So looking at the replay here now, Jerome. Seems to have some... This is just a pad to it. Misses the bat. Descartes is feeling at a straight, straighty short leg. Not really in the regulation position. He's almost at the toe. Of Brian. And that completes over number 38, the 20th of the morning. And the volcanoes have found themselves a wicket. They have wanted more, but they've gotten the biggest one of the lot so far, or the remaining lot. That's in Krumabona. He went for 45 LBW to Shamar Springer. It's 125 for five, the Scorpions. Yeah, and that was the plan for the Volcanoes to come and try and get Bonner back into the dugout. And Springer gets rid of him for the second time. But Garden Bryan is still sailing the ship here for the Scorpions. I haven't seen a boundary in a while here, though, um, Foster. It, earlier on in the morning, we saw where Gordon Bryan, he picked up a six and about three fours or two fours. Mm. Has to dig deep now, Man Singh. Only five singles to his innings. Springer's operating with a straighter field now, so only two slips. And the man who just did the fielding, Sunil Ambris, he's fielding at short mid wicket while there's a forward square and a mid on, as well as a mid off. Kieran Kotoy, substitute fielder. 
There's also a short cover in the captain, Kimani Melius, who has quietly gone about his business. And there's a deep point to protect any width. There's dead ball from umpire Jackie Williams. Yeah, because Gordon Bryan wasn't ready. He was getting his attire <laughs> sorted. Jackie Williams quickly shouted dead ball. So it's going to have to reload that one. Shamar Springer has been tidy. Well, Martin picked up three wickets yesterday. We haven't seen him there in the attackers yet. I'm wondering. Oh, yeah. We saw him earlier. But I'm wondering if Kimani will bring him back shortly to see if they can pick up another. Wasn't as consistent as he was yesterday, Darius Martin. It wouldn't be a bad option, uh, not to say Springer is bowling badly, as this one is too full. Mansing into one of his favorite shots, his cover drives. And gets a single for it, out to deep point. Cyrus comes around. Strong return to. Ricky keeper Tevin Walcott. A hundred and twenty six to five. Scorpions is still trailing by another fifty six runs. Well, having Springer coming from the Courtney Walsh, and I will bring back M Martin from the Michael holding end and see if they could pick up another wicket. If I was the captain, that's what I would do. You see the ladies from the Jamaica national team. You see Lena Scott over there and Selena White. And Gordon Bryan is forward again. And that completes another over for Shamara Springer, his ninth. One for 16. Oh, scorpions there. Umpire Jackie Williams and Gregory Brathwaite having a chat with Gordon Bryan. Can see see Bryan kind of uh, holding the right, the left hand a little bit. He got struck on it this morning. I think they have an issue with him calling on the subs every over holding up play in the umpire's mind. But Demba is the man Singh who calls for a quick single. Brian is struggling, but he gets home. He was laboring for a minute. Going, he going, has batted all morning so far. He has more than night watched. <laughs> He's into day watch now. Brian sets himself and Demba round the wicket. And he's full forward. Kills any spin right in front of him. That's Gordon Brian. Hasn't offered a chance to the spinners yet. He's looked so comfortable. Doesn't look worried. 
after. There was a load of P for LBW. He offered a chance in the second ball of the day. But since then, clear mindset as to how he wants to operate against the spin of Kenneth Demba, who is not getting much turn or causing much problems. Should just slow it down a bit in my eyes. Too flat. Almost as if he's getting through the overs quickly. Or he's in a hurry to get to lunch, Kenneth Dembo. Well, it's another 22 minutes before lunch. This, par this, this partnership is consists of 18 runs. So after every delivery, you can see Brian fixing some part of him and walks down the track and gets back to the crease. Turn, even though there was a change in field, it doesn't make a difference to Gordon Brian as he nullifies the threat. And 40th over ball. So the Scorpions, they have already achieved something, which is batting just as many overs as they did in the first innings. At this stage, in the first innings, they were nine wickets down. Faced only six more deliveries, unless there's six more, six straight wickets in this over. I think they'll be batting more than 41 this time. Definitely, because they were bowled out for 159 in 41 overs on day one. Just one run from Demba over. So after this delivery from Shamar Springer, you're going to be hearing the voice of Keswick Williams. Abhijay Man Singh gets a single, inches the score up to 128 Eight for five, and they trail by 54 runs now, the Jamaica Scorpions. That 54 runs means they have to get them for the Volcanoes to bat again. So they have added 54 runs this morning as Keswick takes his time to get the captain, Jermaine Blackwood, would want these two batters to stick around and get the remaining 54 runs. And you can see how confident uh, Gordon Bryan is. And Munsing, he's definitely working with uh, Gordon Bryan. They are communicating. Ticking keeps the scoreboard ticking. And it is spring up who picked up the wicket early of, of Bonner. Loud appeal, well, a half appeal. Umpire Jackie Williams just indicating that it is drifting down the leg side. And it is Brian very mindful of what's happening in the game. Bring a ball pretty well in the first innings. Picked up three. Welcome back, Keswick. It's always good to sit next to a beautiful young lady in the presence of Kimberly out of Jamaica. She'll have to show me some sights here while I'm in Jamaica. Haven't been around much here in Jamaica. Every time I'm in Jamaica, I always feel like I don't go anywhere. I'm always... It's either I'm training, I'm on the field playing. Never really got the chance to do much sightseeing. Okay. Well, after the game, then we can go for a ride. Ochi Rias, there's Duns River Fall. Yeah, our director was telling me that he wants to do a little bit of sightseeing as well. Yes, he told me that he wants to do that and Sunday maybe goes to... Ochi Rias or Negril to Rick's Cafe. Well, definitely we can do that as a full team. The Cricket 360 team. We're going on a road tour. <laughs> definitely. But looking at um, Garden Brand here, Keswick, very confident, very mindful of what's happening in the game. 41 overs completed. 
Scorpions, they're at 128 for five. Garden Brian, who's on 30 from 83 deliveries. We saw and Kuma Bonner walks back to the dugout. He's gone for 45. It's Munsing and Brian at the crease. They trail by another 54 runs, Keswick. And it's just another couple of minutes, 17 minutes to 12 before lunch. But I'm wondering how soon they will bring, Kimani will bring back Martin in the attack after he picked up three quick wickets yesterday. It's this Demba who is going to continue. As Foster said, he's bowling very quickly. So we're going to sweep shot one into the rib cage of Jeremiah. I'm wondering how is he doing now? Monsing is just eight from 30. Just having Brian doing what he needs to do because he has been there from yesterday. Try not to lose any more wickets. But trying to get the remaining 54 Keswick. That would be the plan for Scorpion, obviously. So, but they will have to have a plan in how they're gonna get there. They still have Morris in the hut. So Salmon, double green. Also can use the bat. Just, just wondering what's the plan here now for the volcanoes. Demba is coming from around the wicket, bowling off spin. With two feelers in front of the bat. Well, not in front of the bat, but on the leg side. So there's short leg and there's a guy somewhat just in front. Sleep. So I'm still wondering because he's, he's somewhat going across. If he's getting purchased in terms of turn, then I will clearly understand. But coming from over will be a bit more suitable. The fact that you have those two guys at short leg, one just behind and, just, and one just in front. If you spin the ball into the right-hander, Coming forward, there's always a leading edge, or there's a possibility that they might get a leading edge to whether the feeler at behind short leg or just in front. Coming around, the ball will sort of slide across the right hander. But then we're seeing Shadrach discard for the first time. With ball in hand. I was expecting that because Sherman Lewis is, is out the game. Have a little niggle. Not to show what it is, but I was told that he might not be able to come out for the rest of the game. But Shadrach discard on debut with ball in hand. <laughs> the ladies uh, by the George Headley stand, they scream for that shot just now. But Garden Bryan is well set at the crease. See Selenia White, Sharda Williams. So Shadrach in the attack. Seems as if the ladies, they got a rest day today. Yeah. Tournament comes up in March. It's a nice delivery there from Shadrach. 
Shadok obviously don't have that sort of pace to trouble Gone Brian. So what he needs to do is just keep it on stump. Attack the stump. And kinda looking at his action here now. Looking at his action here, Shadrach discard. Nice strong run up. But the fall away. Kind of have to work on that. Well, that previous de delivery was a little bit too wide from uh, Garden. But Garden, he's well set. He's very patient and very watchful. Spring have been bowling well from in the first innings and Garden have played him very well. That's the over completed. 43 overs gone. It's 130 for five. Just looking at Shadrach discard ball in action here. Nice strong run up. But my only issue here is him falling away at the crease. Which means he will always kinda angle the ball down down the leg side so he needs to be a bit more straighter probably pitch it on fourth stomp or so so that it will finish on stomp so the fact that he's falling away the fact that he's falling away anything on stomp off our middle stomp it always tend to slide down leg so in terms of lbw shouts and stuff like that always left a little bit of doubt in the umpire's mind because of him falling away but starting it just outside the line of third stump hitting that fourth stump line going down would be a lot better unless he decides to be more upright at the crease Still trying to figure out the plan here for Kenneth Demba coming around, bowling off spin to Abhijay Man Singh. Only the short leg now. He has implemented the leg slip. Well, he if he's getting enough purchase, I understand. But then he's pitching it outside the line of off stump and sometimes down on off stump. Outside the line of off stump. That will just go on. And that was a quicker one from Dembo there. Thought that it would have gone on to the stump. So the field that he had before, nothing is wrong with the field with two short legs, one in front and one just behind. Nothing is wrong with that. But then you have to be spinning the ball. Get the batter to come forward and then get in that extra bounce as well. The wicket has bounce in it. Or even trying to jog him out of the crease there so the keeper can get to do the work behind. But clearly, he knows the intention of doing that. We don't know. 130 for five. And it is Shadrach who is continuing. Eight minutes before lunch. There you see Shadrach operating again. Would like to see the replay of his action a while so that I can so that I can give you guys the opportunity to understand what I'm talking about. There you see it. 
because of him falling away at the crease, will always tend to push the ball down the leg side. Yep. There you see it, going out, falling away, pushing it down the leg side. So anything that he bows at the pitch on middle or even on off stump, it will always sort of slide down. So he needs to be a bit more upright. So for bowlers like him, he would need, it would be difficult for him to, to even get that out swinger going because of him falling away. And just to add to that, uh, Keswick, you can look at his head going the other direction after this delivery, then we'll have the replay. So he's always going to, as you said, straight down the leg side. Look at his head. All the way. His follow through as well is immediately going off the wicket. So something I think that coach Kenroy Peters should look at and would look at as well because he's He's a bowler himself, or he was a bowler himself. Uh, not a lot of damage in that over, but still, it's something that you need to look at. At this level, batters are smart enough to understand bowlers and how they go about their work. So, a lot of guys will realize that he goes down the leg most of the time. And over a period of time, they will figure out or find a way how to play him. Then but he's still operating from a wrong the wicket as well. But to add to the, the, the pace bowlers, they don't need to try anything too hard. Just continue to be disciplined from where they left off yesterday. Continue with that line and length. No need to try and bowl too fast. And I think... Uh, Shadrach was trying that just now, trying to bowl too fast. You see him drifting down the leg side. He's heading one direction. The ball is in another direction. And the Scorpions, they trail by another 51 runs. The well set Gordon Brown, who is on strike, he's on 30 from 94 delivers. Dembo, what is the plan for Dembo now? Well, I'm clueless what the plan is because this will be a bit easier for Gordon to play. As I mentioned, he's coming around. Probably bowling a bit too fast. Not really getting the purchase like what we were seeing from Pete Salmon yesterday. He's going down on off stump. Miller stump line. There's a leg slip and a short leg in place. You could probably create a bit more chance coming from over, spinning the ball into the right hander. But skipper has his plans. He's the one that's also at short leg, so he understands what he wants from his bowler and what he wants his bowler to achieve. Yes. I'm just sitting here in the commentary bar, so I'm looking on. <laughs> I'm not the skipper. And I don't know what the plan is, but I've played the game as well, so I understand how to go about doing things. I've played a bit of first class cricket as well. And I've played around people who understand the game. And I've learned a lot from people who played the game a great deal. Played with Dyke the Butler at the local level in St. Vincent. So I've learned a lot. But that's the end of the over. No damage done there. Just one off the over, Kimberly. Well, yes, just one. So uh, umpire Jackie Williams just checking her watch. It is three minutes to 12 o'clock. But with them bowling, is it they're trying to avoid uh, Scorpions to get runs or they're trying to get a wicket? We can't understand what is the plan the persons over there at Kensington stand over the Kensington stands there. What what are they trying to do? Get wickets or trying 
to well, not let them get runs. The good thing about it is, even though he's operating from a wrong, and me being in the commentary boot probably don't understand what the plans are, they would have their plans. And they would understand what they need to do to, to, to achieve those plans. The good thing about it is that he's consistently bowling in that area. So there must be a plan. Us not knowing about it is, is understandable because we're not on the field. Yes. But they will have their way of going about it. The good thing about it is that, is that he's consistently going down on that line. Well, Shadrach comes back better than the previous over. <laughs> Keeper having a grand time behind the wicket. But Kimani wouldn't mind taking another one before they go off for lunch. Another 51 runs to get here for the Scorpions. They're trailing by 51. It is Man Singh who is on strike. Face 46 delivers. But the plan and the aim of the Scorpion is to try and get the remaining 51 runs and even try to stay there for the rest of the day. Try and bat it out. We have the well set Brian at the non striker end. Outside of the off stump again. By Shadrach. He comes back pretty good. Partnership consists of 22 runs from 107 deliveries. Kevin Walker just coming up to the stump there. Lack of pace from Shadrat this card. And he's oh. gone. He is gone. Sunil Ambrose walked up to Abhijay Mansing. Don't know what he said. The keeper came up Sunny Lambris at short mid wicket taking a brilliant catch another wicket Abhijay Mansing is gone keeper coming up did the trick well it seems as if it is a commentator curse because as I said that Kimani would look to get another wicket before lunch and Shadwick did pick up that Shadwick did pick up that wicket at, and the last delivery to complete the over and they will be happy with that, 131 for five. And it's now time for lunch, Keswick. Abhijay Mansing have to go. It's 131 for five. Just scoring 11. Gordon O'Brien and chugging away nicely for 30. Shadow at this guy picking up his first wicket. It's now 131 for six. Jamaica Scorpion trail by 51 runs. Wynwood Island Volcano controlling the, the run rate, bringing it down to 2.8 or so. Brilliant work here from the Volcanoes. Good catch by Sunil Ambrose. So they walk out for lunch full of confidence. And we'll, we'll be right back after a bite. The Windward Island Volcanoes could see themselves probably looking at one more session in this game. But obviously Jamaica have different plans. So let's see how they would approach the game after the lunch period.
So welcome back to Savannah Park for this the post lunch session of day three. It's the Jamaica Scorpions, the home team against the Winnow Islands Volcanoes. 131 for six. Bit of a problem here for the Scorpions. They're in danger of being dismissed before getting to the deficit created by the Volcanoes, 182 runs lead. So they need to get 51 more runs to ensure that the Volcanoes bat again. A new man will be starting with Gordon Bryan, who was a night watchman from last night. He has batted 99 deliveries. And I'm almost sure that's the most a Scorpions player has batted all day. All match, I should say. As we look at the wicket of Abhijay Man Singh, the final ball before lunch, the wicket keeper Tevin Walcott just took the initiative to come up to the stumps because they realized that Man Singh was out of his crease to negate any inward movement from Descartes. And they got the wicket right on the cusp of lunch. And a session that would have probably been drawn edge to the volcanoes again because they got the wicket of Nkrumah Bonham and Abhijay Man Singh. Keswick Williams is with me and Gordon Bryan will be taking strike from Kenneth Demba who is going to be bowling from around the wicket and Keswick probably not the best option in my estimation based on what the surface has offered so far but he continues to guard Gordon Bryan who has faced his 100th ball in this innings he has 30 runs and it's 131 for six well i'm in full support of what you're saying because the thing is for me if if the wicket is giving you that assistance or if it's not coming around would always be that coming over so it would always be that the best option because then you have the ball spinning into the right hander there's short leg, there's leg slip. And even though it's not really turning, you can come wide of the crease and use the angler as well. Coming into him is always a good option. The fact that you have leg slip and short leg. And I think it, you should be ensuring that you have that man at slip in play almost every delivery. And so bowling from over the wicket, you're probing from on and about off stump. With a natural angle, if you have that one that slides on with the arm, you create that opportunity for the outside edge. Don't make the slip a redundant position. Well, he has a, a left-hander now in, in Morris. He was attacking in the first innings. He shows good promise. An easy single. Walcott is not happy. He wanted that man inside the circle or inside the imaginative, imaginative 30 yard circle. Sonny Lambridge does the feeling he's at long off, but Morris is off the mark. He's an attacking player by nature. Well, I looked at him in the first innings, and, and, and that's what I was talking yeah, about. There is a chance. Gordon Bryan has to go. Gregory Brathwaite says yes, he's not happy. He has to make that slow walk back. And it's another wicket for the Volcanoes. And they are making another inroad here into the, into the Scorpions batting. Let's see. Yeah, there was clear bat. That was easy for Brathwaite. He's an international umpire. Gordon Bryan has to depart. A long vigil comes to an end. At 31 from 101 deliveries. And Keswick. I don't know. Around the wicket or over the wicket, Kenneth Demba gets a wicket. Well, the likelihood of that happening consistently, if I have to put some percentage on that, it wouldn't be a lot. But coming over would have made it happen probably a bit more often. Yeah. But he has got the wicket, as I mentioned. They must have a plan. That Shadrach Descartes who took the catch. Yeah. As I mentioned, they must have a plan because he has been consistently bowling down on that line. 
coming down that line hoping for some turn. He did get a bit of purchase on that one. Clearly hit the bat. Umpire Bradford. Good decision. First wicket for Kenneth Demba. And that's a, a gut-wrenching blow for the Scorpions because they would have had their discussions in the lunch and interval and banking on probably Brian batting another hour or so. All of that gone through the door, but he has done his job. We have to be fair to him. And just like the rest of the specialized batters haven't come to the fore. They didn't come to the fore in the first innings. The Scorpions made only 159. And by the looks of it, 182 is insurmountable at this point. But Pete Salmon, who has been in good form recently, is at the crease. And he's forward. Dembo goes another dot. We take another look at the wicket. Your description, Kes. Good catch, good delivery. Something that he has been doing for the entire spell. Ever since he decided to come around, keeping it just outside the line of middle stump, going down. But almost every delivery that he had bowled down that line was just going across. That one gripped a little. Finding the edge of the bat. Good catch by Shadrach Discard. Mm. Kind of asked him the reason for it, and he said he just wanted to bowl a few from around the wicket. Just trying something different. <laughs> he did get a wicket. <laughs> so As I said, there's always a plan towards yeah. doing something. We might not know the plan because we're sitting here. They would have their plan. So their plan did come together. But when you sit down and have to put percentage behind certain things that you do, yeah. you would more pick up a wicket by coming over with that ball spinning into the right, into the right hander. You have a leg slip and a short leg. And but I thought it was too easy for Gordon Bryan as well leading up to lunch. It was just too fast. So he was just relying on staying on the back foot. He played a majority of his deliveries halfway back because he trusts the pace and the bounce that was coming towards him from them. But he didn't have any option to look up. Well, I did mention to him he was bowling a bit too fast. Give the ball time to spin yeah and Shadrach Descartes who took a wicket of the final ball just before, before lunch. lunch yeah so to left handers he will be a lot better in terms of him falling away at the crease to have that ball going across the left handers this time too much on the leg. Easy pickings for Morris. And it was good instinctive cricket from Tevin Walcott as well. Because the, the field was set for straight bowling. As in bowling towards middle and off to ensure that Abhijay Man Singh was consistently playing. But Descartes was almost worried or overcompensating that he was getting too straight and started to bowl too wide. And I thought the, the wicket keeper coming up just signaled to him that it's okay. Don't worry. You can hit at those. Just try to get Mansing hitting the, in, on the front pad. It wasn't the greatest delivery. But still, the plan, as you mentioned, worked out. Oh no. Has to reload that one, Shadrach. Second time for the game. Now I'm seeing this. I guess saw it from Kenneth Demba earlier. No, from this card. I guess it's a yeah. windward thing. <laughs> it's like once from Pete Salmon as well. And Pete Salmon? Yeah. So two spinners and a medium pacer. I haven't seen it from the pacers. Maybe the medium pacers and the spinners are not gripping it tight enough. I'm not, not sure. <laughs> or they're just a bit slippery. T too slippery. Yeah. It's all right. The sun is hot. <laughs> they're sweating. That's a wild whoosh by someone just coming to the crease. That is third delivery. I mean, really good return from Shadow at the Scott so far. 
I think he only has a wicket. Just one? Yeah. Don't worry, the scorers will fix it. Yeah. Don't worry, viewers. He only got one wicket. We'll fix it in a while. The scorers will fix it in a while. Shot at this card. No, you see the wicket keeper coming up again. Once he realizes that this card goes too wide, it creates a picture for the medium pacer. He passes umpire Jackie Williams. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hands on head. Is he getting a bit of movement there, Foster? It looks as if it was a drop chance there. Oh. Or not. Moment. Just play inside the line of the delivery. There, Pete. But he was really good with the ball in the first innings. Mm. Getting some purchase as well. Spinning the ball a great deal. Yeah. I think that's Selena White and Rashada Williams. Rashada Williams, the West Indies women's player. Selena White, a fast bowler. That's clipped away by someone. Shadrach obviously picking up that strain. Picking up that little bit of. Well, missing Sherman Lewis. He has to pick up that strain now. Ball in a few overs. So far, so good. Just a little bit of technical error. Seeing Sunny Lambris there as a bowler. Uh, that won't happen. I actually saw Sherman Lewis carry a couple of drinks just before lunch. He came back down, but he, he was wobbling a bit. For Morris, not something that we, we would probably have expected early in his innings. Well, there's no one deep, so they have been asking him now to go over the top. No easy runs for Morris. Well, he did mention he's very attacking, and yeah. we saw that as well in the, in the first innings. Sherman Lewis, I think it was about two or so overs before lunch, or... Are over or so before lunch, second to last over before lunch. Good one from Demba. Yeah. And he, as you, as you hear the wiki keeper through the stump mic, Walcott, he knows that Morris is itching for a big shot. And when it's instinctive for you, it's almost hard, difficult for you to be restrained. Your, in, your instincts are to get boundaries and to get them at will. Once that almost dries up for you, it asks you to come out of your comfort zone. That's the thing when you're naturally a boundary hitter. Good, quick single there. Pete Salmon had to get the big skates on. It was hit to the left of Descartes, moved around to his left, which basically created the time for the single because he had, he's right-handed, so he had to go around the ball. Had a good return, though, but the, the Pete Salmon was quick enough. You like this field, by the way, for Pete Salmon? Almost an in-out field, an attacking field. Not a bad feel, but right here, right here, one, one, two, two. the only thing about this feel is that you're coming around to the right-hander. There's no point 
The ball will go across the right hander. Taking the edge, that's an easy one, two point or backward point. Ryan John will have a bit of work to do anything around that area. The thing is, if the wicket is, if the pitch is spinning, or if you're a bowler that usually spins the ball, then bowling from around there, spinning it, spinning it into the right hander is not a problem. Okay, so you have to bowl with the right pace as well. But good returns here from Shadrach, picking up that strain from losing Sherman Lewis. I asked a question earlier, and he should be fine. He should be okay for the next game, but a little bit of precaution, just keeping him out for the rest of the game so that he can get some rest, sort himself out. So Shadrach Discard is picking up that, that stream that he would be the one to bowl a few overs. Full face of the ball presented there by Romain Morris. And because of the position of the game as well, there's no need for him to take a risk or any risks because the Volcanoes, they're well and truly on their way to winning this game if they continue with this momentum. So there's no need for him to overcomplicate anything. Still trail by 45. So they first have to get over that 44 run mark. And then they can start scoring. But they're running out of wickets. Pete Salmon, probably the last batter in hurt that, that you could say that's going to stand up. Well, there's Dover Green, sorry. Mm -hmm. Score a couple of 50s. In first class, we got about five half centuries or so. So there is some ability there with the bat. Shadrach still doing well. And I think that's the line for Pete Someone You have to bowl on and about middle and off. Because once there's width, he's going to throw those arms at it. He has long levers. Anything to the left of mid-off to mid-wicket. That's where he's going to score most of his runs. Good domestic player here in Jamaica. Took three wickets. He has been... In and around the setup for years, beat someone. Played youth cricket as well. Into his 30s now. Wouldn't be surprised if the skipper brings back probably a Ryan John or Shamar Springer to take over from Shadrach. He's bowled 4.4 overs now. Picking up one wicket. Only four runs conceded, so. He's doing a fine job. I have this theory that whenever you start after a break, especially a lunch or a tea, not just drinks, but an extended break, that's forcefully driven by Pete Someone, and gets a single to you and Jeremiah. Those extended breaks, as the score goes up to 139 for seven at the end of over number 51, is that... My two best bowlers on the day is those bowlers I want to resume after the break with. I don't know if it's just too theoretical or it's just playing the moment. Chadwick Walter made 20, Ducks for Brown and Mackenzie, and Kuma Bona 45, 16 for Jermaine Blackwood, 31 for Gordon Bryan, Abhijay Man Singh, he made 11. Uh, yeah, your, your, your thoughts on that theory in terms of starting with your two best bowlers on the day. That, that's normally how it would go, but sometimes you, you, you would want to start with the bowler that's probably, you know, that's, that's, that's consistent as well. Yeah. Someone opens the arms and lengthens the blade, hammers the ball all the way for six. Another one in the Scorpions innings. That was brutally dismissed. 
dispatched with disdain. His first boundary, Pete Someone. So it's the bowler who's operating and the bowler that's doing well at the point in time because in this game, clearly the best bowler is Ryan John and Shamar Springer. Demba goes flat immediately. He refuses to give it air again. But at this point, they, have cho they chose to start back with Shadrach and Demba who were operating before the lunch period. Because they're not bowling badly at all. So at the present moment, they were bowling well in tandem. So we would want to continue with them. That's a crowd catch. So it's according to what's happening at the time. And according to the batter that's at the crease. I agree. So my theory is just too driven by the books practically sometimes doing the books is fine but sometimes going out of it is okay as well yeah you, you can understand why Descartes is bowling as well because he, pick up, he picked up that wicket just before lunch the thing is as long as if, if you're going out the book as long as it's justifiable, justifiable and yeah. you have a plan towards achieving whatever you want to achieve then you can go about doing it but stepping outside of the book without any plan and any justifiable cause then you will have a problem but so far so good for Kenneth Demba 13 overs 23 runs one wicket he's normally very economical I would say yeah. for the volcanoes you can see a couple of senior men having a chat there. Kenneth Demba, Ryan John, Skipper Melius, and Tevin Walcott, the keeper. He would understand the game because he is, he's seen everything from behind the stump. We're normally the smartest, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I beg to differ, but yeah. okay. <laughs> you have to trust us with the DRS. You have to trust us with the conditions. You have to trust us to know what's happening off the surface you have to trust of trust us to know if it's seeming yeah you guys you guys happy days because when the <laughs> sun is hot you're it's the only person the feeling team that can wear a helmet well true a little bit of shade <laughs> morris goes downtown opens his arms again he's been looking for that over pitch delivery and he's in no mood to hide his feelings here he's going to bash anything that's over pitched and that's a four for Romain Morris and takes the score now up to 151 for seven. Exactly what I was saying when it comes to the night watchman theory. If you could have him or had him come in yesterday with Bonner. Yeah. You know how he's going to play. Give you that chance to get in closer to that score. Still trail by 31. But if he stays there for at least 10 overs or so, they would pass that 31 mark. Him and Pete Salmon, there are two batters that's going to Go play hard. their shots. Yeah. And they go by it very smartly. Just punch down the ground. Picks up one. Game awareness that. You just drop the pressure a bit. Pick up your innings now. You can rebuild and reset how you go about scoring your runs. It's just like how Sunil Ambrose go about his, his, his batting, his plans. Comes in, spinner is bowling, feel is up, he's going to go over. You take him back, he's going down the ground. And that's understanding your game and knowing where you're at. So I must commend him on how he goes about scoring. Romain Morris, if he had came into bat yesterday and then occupied a crease, play shots, didn't get out this morning, it would have been a different story, a different score. Yeah. Because that would have given Bonner a little bit more confidence to be a bit, probably a bit more attacking. 
Not saying that they should be attacking. But he would have been a bit more in flow. Knowing that there's another guy at the end. Who is looking to score. Yeah, you could see this morning that he was very cautious as well. He was even worried of taking quick singles. Because he knew how precious his wicket was in the situation. Not, not saying that Gordon Bryan didn't do his job. But it's just that it, was all, it came to a point where he was restricted. And the it's, score it's, it's a matter of that chemistry. Getting somebody that you could, you could feed off. Getting that energy from that other person. So it's that chemistry. So it sometimes work, but the chemistry here is that Pete Salomon punching that one. Wouldn't get to the boundary though. Looks like he's having a little bit of chemistry with Shadrach. It looks very comfortable. Very easy. Shadrach is not really one of those pacey guys. He, he's the type that just you know, keeps that line and length. But usually he strays because of his falling away falling away at the crease yeah but someone really transferred the weight nicely there there you see it again nice run up strong but then that falling away at the crease yeah. has Men to stay upright some more mentioned it to to, to coach kenway peters and he realized that he has to do some work with him to get him to flow through the crease nicely yeah not because he's a medium bowler but you will need him to stay more upright because that can kind of, you know, affect his line and length and his consistency. I think that is the biggest problem with it. Outside of him just being probably bowling the odd deliveries that goes down the leg side, I think it's just building up pressure and ensuring that you have constant pressure. Mm. Once you're able to create pressure as a bowler, the wickets naturally come. Yeah, so it's going to be Kenneth Demba to Pete Salmon. And because of what he did in the first innings, the Volcanoes, they have took notice. So he's bowling from over again. He has that leg slip and the short leg in place. Easy single for Pete. Someone there. Looks very comfortable. Ever since he came to the crease, he looks comfortable. Romain Morris as well. He's one of those players that is packed with confidence. You can see it. His approach to batting. Just need to occupy the crease a little bit longer. He's not the type to play the blocking game. He likes to feel the ball on his back. He looks a, a compact player. And as you mentioned, Pete Salmon here in, in Jamaica is one of those players that hits the ball a long way. And we have seen that a while ago. That big six off Kenneth Demba. The deficit is now 28. I think the Volcanoes will be Crying for a wicket, he goes inside out. Beautiful shot. A shot of authority from Romain Morris. The easy and slow turn from Demba. It was too full. Created space. And gave himself room to just hit over extra cover. That's one of the harder shots to play in cricket. But he made it look pretty easy. Romain Morris. It's one of the hardest shots, but it's probably one of the easiest shots for Dwayne Bravo. He eats that for lunch, breakfast, and dinner, going over cover. A good end to the over for the Scorpions. Five runs off it. It's 158 for seven. And Romain Morris picking up a head of steam here. 
We've seen a change in bowling and you, you almost preempted that because the runs have started to flow here. 13 for Morris, 13 for Pete Salmon. Took a liking to Shadrach Descartes in his previous over did Morris. Shamar Springer is going to be the man that is introduced or reintroduced. Mentioned that a couple of overs ago we might see a change in bowling soon. Shout out this card, five overs. Just about six runs conceded. So he has done his job. Brings back Shamar Springer, one for 17 of 10. Jamaican Scorpion trail by 24. So we have seen a change in how Shema Springer approaches bowling. He has been attacking the stumps a lot more in this innings. That's a, yeah, just, that's just adjusting to the conditions as well. Understanding what you need to do. Being aware of the situation. So in the first innings, he was more outside the line of off stump, fourth stump, or fifth stump going down on that channel. But now he's more attacking the stump. His first wicket today is a LBW. I think a decision went against him as well. Wasn't given that wicket. We at the commentary box here thought it was very close, but we're not the umpires. Just close. That's why I said you're good at words better than me. <laughs> I have good eyes. I can see from here. But in terms of words, that's the reason why you're working for TVJ. <laughs> Good at words. I'll get there someday. <laughs> and someone is forward again and he's looking easier as the innings progresses. Scorpions. Desperately need these two to bat for the rest of the day. As much as they have been attacking so far, 26 balls for Salmon, 16 for Morris. But being able to bat for a sustained period of time and scoring at the same rate that they're scoring is what the Scorpions would be hoping for. Springer has brought some level of calmness now to this, to this phase after lunch. It's getting scary for the volcanoes. Good to see Shema Springer and Ryan John. Operating a good shot there from, from Pete. Just a little punch down the ground, good stop by Johan Jeremiah at long on, at mid on. Sorry, yeah, that was a good stop because that was hit hard. It was, I wouldn't say hit hard, but it was timed well, it was going at a rate of knots. And Jeremiah had to move smartly to his right. So, good over for Springer. 11 overs, 18 runs. Kenneth Denver is still operating. Quiet day for Darius Martin. Started this morning, had that one bad over to Gordon Bryan. Took 14 off that over. We haven't seen him since. Pete Salmon is forward and gets a single. He probably 
rearing to go as well checking to see how many overs have been bought 55 that ball is a little bit older now well, he was getting that in docker all boys, evening yesterday going, going, fellas, going, getting fellas. that Chadwick Walton wicket spoke to him before the game this morning while warming up he said it's the only ball he see that sort of kept low in the game which means he's loving the wicket consistency in bunks so mm. Kenneth Denver so far 14 overs one wicket for 29 and he has resorted to going over the wicket now I think he's worried about being struck down the ground too easily by Pete Summon. And because of his stride, he can get his hands through the ball easier. He's back on his ball. The storms crumble. And so too the chances of the Scorpions. That was way too full for him to cut. And you could hear Romain Morris saying it. But Keswick Williams looks like a genius. Go over the wicked Kenneth Dembo. And you will get success. And someone opens up his body. There was a vacant space between point and mid-off. And he was trying to hit that space. And he got beaten. And the ball slams into the stumps. And a massive breakthrough here. And the writing is on the wall. A volcano's victory is on the cusp. Yeah, that can't be cut. The classic of spinner's wicket. Go between bat and pad. Good to see him taking up that wicket of Pete Sowen. Coming over the wicket. Getting that ball to spin into the right hand as he has it. You have a leg slip and a short leg. Comes forward with that bounce that the wicket is getting. Could be enough bunks that can hit the glove, the top of the bat, go to slip. Like what we just saw there. Could present you a wicket. So that's two for Kenneth Denver now. That's two for 30. Or 14.2 overs. It's looking ominous now. Signs are getting louder. And the screams are deafening for the Scorpions. Because they're in deep, deep trouble. At 100. As this one is forward from Derville Green. 161 for 8. So there you see it. Classic off spinners wicked going through that bat and pad. Whether it's coming back on the back foot to punch or going on the front foot, going through bat and pad is always the sweetest way for off spinner to get a wicket. No better feeling. Classical off spinners wicket. Just I just thought that Pete someone was getting. I think he was just overly ambitious with that shot, to be honest. The ball was way too full. He had to be forward to that. And even if he was going back, he had to play with a straight bat. Not a cross batted shot. Try to hit that one true extra cover. Yeah. Forces that one off the back foot, does Romain Morris. He's busy looking for two, but he won't get that. And the score goes to 160. Three for eight to complete over number 56. And Kenneth Demba has two wickets to his name now. Trailing by 29 runs. Well, 19 runs. The umpires having some difficulties with their communication. One 
one thing for sure, the Volcanoes Communication Lines, they are working and working to a T. I doubt the game will get to T at this rate. Springer is around the wicket to Romain Morris. And chipped in the air. Almost giving a chance to short mid wicket. Has to play a, a Herculean act here. Morris. There to get out of trouble. Easy single. 163 now for eight. Well, 64. But this has been a professional display from the Volcanoes. Consistent approach. Good plans. Good bowling changes as well. And they have worked to a T so far. <laughs> there was some record created today around the world as well. Really? Yeah, Patham Nisanka became the first Sri Lankan to score a double century in 50 over cricket. It's now a regularity, by the way. <laughs> Scoring doubles? Yeah. Oh, Only one West Indian with a double century. No guesses who that is. In 50 over cricket, that is. I had conversations before, and I was telling someone that 250 and 260. Knowing 50 over cricket is. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. And I think that all of this is happening because of T20 and T10 cricket. Guys realize that they can score more runs in 50 over cricket. Yeah. Because these days, guys are scoring 220, 240 in T20 cricket. So guys are starting to realize look. If I can score 200, 220, 230 in T20, yeah. what about if I go with the same mindset in one day cricket? Then I can score at least 320. Yeah. 330. Because there was once a school of thought that once you got to 30 overs, whatever the, the total is, you can double it. <laughs> it has moved away from that. Cricket is changing. Yeah. And if you don't change with it, probably might get left behind. Use a single there for Dover Green. I really like by. Yeah. Mm. Mm. To people having question marks about this the Scorpions performance. A couple of people came up to me yesterday and said that they they are not seeing any changes with the Scorpions. And I was being a little bit diplomatic in my response to say that it's the first game of the season and they should be given some time. And one of the responses is that they this is their sixth game and they've only won one in four day cricket. Because the person had already conceded that we won't be winning this one. And <laughs> Derval Green pushed that one down to Kenneth Dembos. I started to say that we need to pressure the coach. I don't, say, I don't know about that. I'm going to be honest with you, Foss. Everybody have their time in cricket. Yeah. I could remember Jamaica, such a strong team. At that time, I think I was playing for, for, for Winwood Islands. Pretty young in the cricket and... We turn up to play CCC at the 3Ws Oval. I think Jamaica was playing Barbados and they had one game left and they had already won the tournament. 
So they were, those were the days when Jamaica cricket was on top. Just sort of lost their way. I'm sure they would come back. It's just a matter of just building a core of players. And then you work from there. Coach is not to be blamed. Yeah. Because the coaches don't play the cricket. The coaches can talk to the players, guide them the right way. The onus is up on those players to go out there and do what the coaches ask, execute the plans. The coach cannot execute the plans from the dressing room. So I don't really ever blame coaches. Some sports, you, you, you can blame coaches because they you have, have the right to make yeah. changes. But when you're out there already, it's all on the captain. And the individuals to carry out the respected task. Exactly. This is not basketball when you're on the sideline as a coach and you can pull out whoever and put in wh whoever. Or, or football. Yeah. Where you can pull in, well, put in a player and take out one. This is cricket. When they're on the field, the most a, the most a coach can do. But, but, as a, but, but a, a retort to that would be, are you seeing a distinctive approach from the team where you can say well i don't think the coach is doing well enough here or i think the players are just not following the the the, the plans sometimes you, your team can be outplayed yeah and i i think they they were outplayed in this game by the volcanoes because from get go you can see the approach of the volcano bowlers and the ability to be consistent in terms of hitting those line and lengths was a lot better than the Scorpion bowlers. No. You can see the plan here now from Shamar Springer. In the first innings, innings, you could have seen him pitching the ball more outside the line of off stump, fourth stump. Now he's attacking the stump. And I must, I must admit to you that I thought the toss was a must win for either team on that opening morning just because of what I knew was happening in Jamaica the going into the game. The yeah, day. it was a must win. There you see it, Springer still attacking that's it, Murray, that's the stump. It. Lovely, lovely. In the first innings, it was a different situation whereby he was just trying to get the edges of the Scorpion batters, Ryan John as well. Did a great job in terms of bowling that channel just outside the line of off stump. So we can see the plans of the Windward Island bowlers and they're executing them as well. Yeah. And you can, you can win the toss all you want. If you don't execute properly, it counts for nothing. So it's all about execution and match awareness. And who can do it over a longer period of time. Because I can remember speaking to the skipper, Kimani Melius, and he did say as a new skipper, he wants to be able to have the respect of all the players. And he wants his players to execute over a longer period of time. Romain Morris is driving back along the pitch. He looks the most confident of the battles so far in this, in this contest. He's only scored 15 runs here, but he scored 35 in the first innings. As much as it was a counter-attacking innings, seems as if he's comfortable batting here at home. And as, we, as I pointed out to you earlier, this is where he plays his cricket for Kingston Cricket Club. And he tucks that one to long leg with Darius Martin with his three wickets so far. Does the feeling. So that's the thing. He would understand how to play on this wicket because he's accustomed to, to bat on this pitch. So he should feel at home. How fitting it is to play, if, 
to play first class cricket on your home ground local club you should feel confident should feel at home attacking the stumps again Shamar Springer over the years I've been looking at the Windward Island Volcanoes franchise they have acquired the services of a lot of Beige and all wonders. Yeah. Kyle Mears played for them for some years. Don't know the reason why they they, they, they seem to produce go, a lot though. Kyle Mears yeah. was there as well. And Justin Graves was there Justin as well. Justin Graves was there as well. That's Springer no. And now Springer. And if you run the checks, there could be another one or two. There is, but I forget <laughs> his name. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna be Demboto, Romain Morris. I'll give you some time to remember who it is. Kevin Stout. Kevin Stout. Yeah. If he, if he if he's listening, comments you know, and he's and he's hearing me, he would be like, I can't believe Kevin would forget my name, though. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sorry, Stouty. I remember Good Kevin friend Stout. of mine. Yeah. Plays his cricket now in America. No hard feelings there, Stouty, but Captain Barbados a couple Captain, of seasons as he well. He did, he did. They came out in the news and, and said a few words on Barbados cricket and what's going on and the politics. It's all over the Caribbean, but guess what? Morris was all over that one. Powerfully shot down the ground. Sunil Ambrose says, I'm playing it wrong. He looks a bit. Looks a bit in a little bit of discomfort there. Yeah, jarred his knee. Bruce would be proud, so so. <laughs> Ryan John just shouting out to him that Cruz would be proud. This is his son. Good work from St. Lambris. That's something you'll really see from him, but really well done. Mm. Looks a bit winded. Cruz, Should be all right. He's laboring a bit. But he's back up and he has his hands akimbo. Brian John is a vibes master in the team. But in his voice we heard here. And Morris goes aerial again. Ambrose, spectator. Not that time. I'm sorry, Sunil Ambrose, but you could only be a spectator. Morris again giving himself room. Poetry in motion. Good shot. And that is the reason why I was asking why didn't he come out and bat yesterday? It would have been a different game in the first session with him and Bonner at the crease. If he had finished the day yesterday, if he had came to bat, it would have been a different game. Just eight more runs now. But you can see that he has a clear idea as to where he wants to score Romain Morris. Yeah. Good technique. He's peppering the, the top of Shamar Springer because he's using his frame as the guideline as to where he's going to hit the balls. And that completes the over. 60 overs bowled, 174 for 8. And they've bowled 37 overs. Well, that's wrong. 42 overs. Today, approaching the first hour here in this second session. It's all about the volcanoes, they are erupting. Mm. Trying to remember the other players who would have. Been at the volcanoes from other territories. They're not really coming to me at the moment. I'll probably just do a couple of checks. Samara Springer is there now. A talent that has so much potential. Estin is still searching for. They're starting to search now for that Jason Holder mold player. 
especially with holder signaling that he's going to be playing or making more of his talent externally if the opportunity arises itself. Springer, one that could be looked at. Bowling upwards of where you clock him from here, upwards of 78, 80 miles per hour. Sorry, say that again. Where do you clock him bowling here? Or so quickly? Shama uh, Springer. Not fast. Probably about average speed, about 75, 76. Little bit of Jace to hold the pace. Yeah. Holder comes from out of the clouds. But the thing is with Holder, he has that extra bounce and no, 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 it might be, it might be, it might be. that consistency that he has over the years. Oh. Tremendous. And that extra bounce, the height. Nice, yeah. So for some the fastest bowler here for sure is definitely Sherman Lewis on the team. He's not on the field now. Then there's Darius Martin. And that's about it. The other bowlers are really medium bowlers. But the thing is, these medium bowlers understands their game. Understands that they're not quick bowlers, but in terms of the errors that they hit, as you can see, Ryan John, Shamar Springer, not fast by any means, but the errors that they would hit. Yeah. And it came to me as well while I was watching when I'm not in commentary and watching the Scorpions bowling. I just thought they missed an X Factor. Someone like Edge Shields. Yeah, it felt as if everyone was operating at the same pace. And, it's, and that's not something you normally characterize Jamaica cricket with. Always has that, X, that tear away fast bowler per se. But Odin Smith is not a wrong. Shane Thomas is not a wrong either, but good push down the ground from Romain Morris. But then there's OJ Shields. Heard a lot about him when I got here, so still waiting to see him operate. Saw him for a few minutes just before the start of the game on the first day. Bowling a few balls. The first two balls he bowled, I asked the, the, the coach, Who is this guy? Because <laughs> what I saw from those couple of deliveries, if you play cricket long enough and you see certain things from two, three balls, you could understand how. You can see for yourself, like, there's some potential here. Yeah. But that's the end of the over, end of the Shamar Springer over. Just two from it. Very economical. And the Scorpions are now six runs behind. You can just get that monkey off their back of losing by an innings. And you just think it's just a matter of when now this innings will be over. If these two can't stuck around for a long period of time. Give an update from the, the game at Chedwin Park between the Barbados Pride, who made 344 for eight, declared the combined campuses. They have recovered from 89 for five to be 150 for five. And Shakir Paris, he made 44, but Jonathan Carter, someone you would have played with, He's 55 from 124, leading the way as Demba around the wicket to Morris. Demario Richards, he's 28 from 91. Really trying to slow down the Bayesian parade here. And the Leeward, Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 53 for one in their second innings. They, were, they made 137 in their first and then dismissed the academy, the West Indies Academy team for 177. And as we told you, 
at Connery. As that one took the edge of Morris at Connery. You don't, I don't think you're going to see play today. Mm, some disturbance with the covers from Animals. Forced seepage of water onto the pitch. And this one is worked into the leg side. And Morris wants to. He doesn't talk to Derval Green as he asked him to do. <laughs> not going to let me slide past that. <laughs> You just say animals. Yeah, yeah, oh, animals. Yeah, yeah. I would like That's the reports I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. Well, someone sent a voice note to me of someone from St. Kitts suggesting that cows mm. trampled on the covers or mm. took up the covers or disturbed the covers. Oh, wow. And overnight rain, soaked the pitch. Yes, that one takes the inner half of the bat as Morris gets another two. Much abandoned due to cows? I mean, I've, uh, I've heard, I've seen a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't say abundant, but delayed because of course. Oh, delayed. <laughs> That's why I said you're good with words. <laughs> it abundant. would be bad if it was abundant because of course. <laughs> just trying to get it right. <laughs> or you Make want to sure get me in trouble, which one? Yeah, I'm just trying to get it right. Make sure that the viewers out there know that uh, it's not abundant. It's just delay. <laughs> yeah. Bad cause. <laughs> you need to control your cows there, St. Kitts. But all love for Connery, all love for St. Kitts. Lovely place. Have you ever been to St. Kitts? Only for about two hours. Two hours. Lovely yeah. place. Small country, but really lovely. But that's the end of a lovely over there from Kenneth Denver. I think that's drinks. 180 for eight, the Scorpions. They trail by two runs. Romain Morris 29, Derva Green 3. And they will resume in a couple of minutes' time when we come back from this break. The Scorpions are trying to find a way to build something that they can defend. You highly doubt it based on how the game has progressed. But it's just a game of glorious uncertainties. You just never know what can happen. The, vo the Volcanoes. I, I think there, Jerome, when they got the six wicket, they got relaxed not pushing to try and get another one and we saw where two chances was missed there by the slip the slip card when garden was batting and disappointed twice there disappointment for shamar springer when umpire jackie williams didn't raise the index finger twice or an appeal for a leg before wicket Bad delivery there from Darius White. And Morris missed out. He's on 31. Could have easily dispatched that anywhere on the leg side. Any bat on that, you thought it would have been four. Martin had a good start yesterday evening where he picked up three wickets sent by Mackenzie and Brown back to the dugout. Also picked up the wicket of Walton, but since morning, this is in the air. So Lozano gives chase, or he goes all the way. And Romain Morris, he's not hanging about here. 
He's trying to get respectability to this score. And the Jamaican Scorpions there in front. And it was a length delivery. Not a, not a shot that I would complain about if I was a fielding captain. I would be happy to see him play that shot again. And six runs for Morris. And he has shown the inclination that he's going to be aggressive. So he's happy to see him play that shot again to set him up for a catch in the deep somewhere down to long off or long on or mid on or mid off. So Lozano and Jeremiah waiting, but that's a full toss. And that's crashed away through the offside. He's playing on the minds now of the bowlers, Romain Morris. He set himself that I'm going to be the aggressor here. I'm going to be brutal to anything that's loose. And once you're offline or off color, he has cashed in. The partnership is 30 now. He has 35 to his, well, 40 to his name. And just 11 runs from the over. Uh, this from morning, Martin not looking as confident as he was yesterday. He had a one over in the early session this morning. He's back after lunch. And I'll tell you, Romain Morris, he's really putting on a show, taking on the, the task here. Try and get enough runs. That's a classic shot. It will run away to the boundary for four. That's a nice shot from Morris. Very confident shot there, uh, Jerome. Exquisite over pitch from Darius Martin. And... It seems to be his favorite scoring area, that extra cover region. He pinged the head off the man at extra cover, who had no chance. Sweetly timed. And that's probably the shot of the day for me. Never easy. On the up. And when they say on the up means he hits the ball on the rise. He just went through with the extension of the right arm, which is that top hand to balance the shot and he didn't hit it with a lot of power though he timed it pretty well and gets it away he moves up to 44 from 43 just 15 runs from that over from martin they have a lead of 13. definitely the volcanoes they will have to bat again and morris is trying to get enough runs on the board but He'll have to get some help from Derval Green. We saw where we saw where volcanoes they were 210 for six, and they put on a partnership of 111 between Ryan John and Samar Springer. Yes. So Kenneth Demba to face to ball to Derval Green and another dot delivery. And Green is solid. He can't hold an end. And if he holds the end and Romain Morris continues at the rate that he's going, Scorpions could be thinking about other ideas of bowling again and probably surprising the Volcanoes. But that's a long shot because... The Volcanoes are still in firm control of this contest. With, with just two wickets remaining for the Scorpions. But they're still putting up a fight though. He's, a ro he's round the wicket now to Morris. Solid in behind that delivery. He's just waiting on that delivery that's over pitched marginally. Just an ounce of the bowlers being off their length. And he's going to climb into it, Romain Morris. And there he goes by punching down to long off. That's his 45th run, a runner ball. And it brings back Keswick Point into focus again that he should have been the man that was sent out when Jermaine Blackwood was dismissed yesterday. But I can understand what the management would have been thinking at the time. They were cautious and worried that everything was going pear-shaped for the Scorpions. But 
possibly if he had butted yesterday for those remaining 20 minutes and butted the length of time that Gordon Bryan butted this morning, he butted over 100 deliveries. Yes. And it could have been a far different story for the Scorpions. But hindsight, they say, is 2020. And you can see everything now, but in the moment, at 40 yards for five or 50 yards for four, it was a different mindset for the Scorpions. They were worried. They were thinking about locking up shop. But the best way to defend, they say, <laughs> is to attack. And that's probably the point that Keswick Williams is making. I, I, Morris, he's, he's, he's showing patience here, uh, Jerome. And you mentioned the word attack. He's going to attack once they give him the bad ball, but he's going to be patient and respect the good deliveries, and he's going to show some aggression. Out there, he's done 45 from 45 deliveries. And Martin is continuing a wide signal there by umpire Jackie Williams. So they're in the lead of 15 runs. If they can be patient and discipline at the crease, Derval and Morris, they can get a good partnership and try to battle the end of the day. That's the pressure telling there on Darius Martin. He's worried about being hit down the ground. There's long off though, long on. Deep backward square. And a man sweeping on the offside. He's worried about being hit for another boundary. Morris is into his drive with a no ball signal by umpire Jackie, Jacqueline Williams. Left-hander Romain Morris. St. Elizabeth Technical Production. He's from Whitehouse in Westmoreland. Played youth cricket for Jamaica. Martin not looking the best of the best today. This is actually his highest ever score in regional cricket. In first class cricket, that is. 45. Had a 96 in list day cricket before Romain Morris. Wikikeeper Butter. Went to UWI several years. Coached by Robert Samuels at UA. And played for the CCC before. And has made the transition now to represent his homeland of Jamaica. So he has been a, on a Caribbean tour. Born in Westmoreland. Played in St. Elizabeth, lived in Kingston, studied in Kingston, played for the CCC that is traditionally based in Barbados. I know he's back home. And he's showing his worth to the public. Well, Ryan John just came down and have a chat with Martin. I guess he's telling him just to be calm and relax and Try to bowl a nice line and length. Don't think about the speed. One ninety nine for eight after the Scorpion resumed this morning and set at seventy two for four. And Kuma Bana he resumed on forty this morning. Only managed to get five runs to his total. Quick run there for Romain Morris. Takes him up to his best ever first class performance, 46. As I said he also won the Kingston Cricket Club Player of the Year. Had four centuries in the local Senior Cup competition, including 100 in the final, where Kingston made over 300 but lost on first innings to St. Catherine, who also made over 300. That game turned into a one-innings affair because of the, the nature of the game. Kingston batted a day and a half to make 300 in the two-day final. While St. Catherine batted only 70-odd overs. Wow. So, I'm wondering what are the thoughts that are going through the head of Martin now, after coming from a high yesterday with three quick wickets, 
get to fight to get one in in this day session 66 runs uh, uh, from his spell so far he's in his 12th over he bowled a wide and a no ball in the over so far Balloons off the thigh pad of Derval Green. Who hasn't really played a shot in anger as yet. He can. But he's really trying to hang around and allow the more established in terms of batting prowess, not experience, but batting prowess, Romain Morris take charge. And that is the right way to go about it. Morris already set. He's on 46. Derval is just on... It, uh, Ford just try to rotate the striker and give it uh, Morris most clipped away good balance shown by Green didn't overhit it either he wants three Morris is not interested especially after being run out in the first inning so that completes the 65th over 202 for 8 the Scorpions and we want to say that they have a decent enough position because they have overhauled the deficit, but they are a long way away from causing any troubles for the Volcanoes. They're only 19 runs ahead with only two wickets in hand. 20 runs ahead with two wickets in hand. And Morris is the top scorer now for the Scorpions. He's on 46. And Bonner, he, he made 45. The run rate now is, is 3.11. They would need more than just a 20 runs lead here. Dembo, who is going to continue? He picked up two for 48 from 20 overs. He has bold on change, Kenneth Dembo. Since he took that ball this morning, hasn't been removed from the attack. So it's pace from one end and this off spin of Kenneth Demba, two for 48 from that the Michael holding end. Bowling to the left-handed Romain Morris was hit him inside out a couple of times. One for, once for a six and once for a boundary. Sonny Lambris also did well to reduce one of those shots as it goes right through. It's going close to the boundary. Should get into the ropes. No. Ryan John does well. And two more runs added. That looks like buys. It went straight through the wicket keeper. We'll wait to see the replay to see what happens. But it was quicker from them, but he's stopped flighting the deliveries now to Morris. Because he has realized that the left-hander, as diminutive as he is, is willing to go over the top. After this delivery, you'd probably see what happened if he just spun past him or went between bat and pad. He drives that one pleasantly to cover. Around the wicket then, but... ready again big sweep over mid wicket forward square is giving chase but only to retrieve it that's a boundary and a 50 for Romain Morris his first in regional cricket and one you think he really and truly deserves and he comes in at the right time too after the eight wicket fall that's a good partnership. That's patience from Morris. And he's showing, him, showing them that it can be done. But it will need an, uh, Derval to continue at the end to back him up. 50 from 51 deliveries. So Morris, he'll be looking to get as much as he can from here. He's in such good form that he can trust himself.
to bat another hour. If he bats another hour, he should be into 70s, 80s territory, which would take him close to T as that completes another over from Kenneth Denver. He's 21st. And the Scorpions, they are 208 for eight at the end of over number 66. Darius Martin. And it's for the first time in this contest, the Volcanoes have looked a little bit ragged. We'll give and take the last wicked partnership in the first innings where Pete Salmon really climbed into Ryan John for a while. They have looked a solid team. We yet to see Ryan John comes back in the attack, the Jerome. <laughs> Says so Martin over the wicket to Derville Green, and he squares a one out to point. <laughs> Gets a single and takes a score now up to 209. <laughs> Keswick, everything is okay? <laughs> okay. Keswick having a good time here. So, it's a lead of 25 runs. Is it, Jerome? I haven't seen the change on the, the scoreboard here yet. Would be, I think it would be 27, because they're 209, I think. That's wayward again from Darius Martin. I think it's probably time for Ryan John to get another spell. Or another burst. Yeah, it seems as if uh, uh, Martin, he's a little bit uncomfortable. I keep seeing him holding on to that left leg while walking back from the crease or from the pitch. But after Ryan John picked up five wickets in the, f the first innings, I think the captain would want to see him finishing off things here. Maybe he'll introduce him in a few. Reintroduce him back in the attack. Work that one away nicely, Morris. It's really comfortable out there. You saw him touching his badge. Say that he's doing it for the team after raising his bat for that half century. Turned into the direction where a couple of his friends are, as well as the West Indies test coach is here as well. That's Andre Coley. We saw where three batters got half century yesterday, and now we see Morris got a half century showing them that it can be done. There's nothing wrong with the pitch. You just have to be patient at the crease. Uh, application is the key. I think the concentration levels weren't as high for the Scorpions. They're 210 for 8. It was never a 200 for 10, eight, 210 for 8 pitch. Yep, so he was coming into the crease. He was mindful control his thoughts and know that he'll have to settle down and bat. Green not getting the timing right on that. He's trying to ease that one through the offside. Stoney Lambris who has been the live wire. He's chatting away all game to the batters, even to the bowlers. It's a bit quiet in the, the outfield there now. Earlier in the morning, there was a lot of chatting as well. Another delivery on the back foot. Too short for, Der for Derville Green to have any worries about. And he just, he's just easing that into the offside to complete 
Another over from Darius Martin. Romain Moore is 51 from 57. Five fours and two sixes. At striking at 89.4. Good rate. Well, that's the job of Derva Green. Not to try anything extra. Just stay there and block it. If we get one, we get one. But Morris will be in charge. At the crease, he's well set. He's on 51 from 57. And Derval, he's on 7 from 30. Not worrying about the dots. So Derval, his duty is just to stay there and let Morris have the goal. Two hundred and ten at this stage yesterday, the volcanoes they were two hundred and ten for six, and Springer and Ryan John they put on a whopping hundred and eleven runs partnership before it was broken before T. So it can be done with the Scorpions here. The only difference is, though, it's two wickets, I mean, two wickets to go. The volcanoes would want to look to get those two wickets quickly before T and just resume after T and knock whatever is set for them. Morris is forward again. So easy, this wicket is. He can trust. Whatever is happening, presenting a full face of the bat, no explosive turn of the wicket. It was fired in by them, but you could see it was almost like an arm ball. It was drifting into the pads. Easy single for the left-hander who goes up to 52 from 61 deliveries. And that's a 50-run partnership between the two. Seven runs contributed. Could not be. Has to be five. And then he has 38. Romain Morris off that 50. Two deliveries to come before you have a change in commentary. Derville Green ushers that one to Shamar Springer. So the Scorpions there. Effectively, 29 for 8. If we're being as open as possible as it is with the viewers to put it in context. So that completes the 68th over of the contest. And the Scorpions, 211 for 8 after facing a 182 run deficit. Romain Morris, he has 52 and has shared in a 50 run partnership with Derville Green, his clubmate, and Parishina as well. Kim, and the, after Kim, you would hear from the, uh, Keswick. Keswick Williams. So it seems as if they're going to bring Springer back in the attack. Well, no. Martin is going to continue. See Springer warming up. Martin picked up three wickets. So far, blown away the top order yesterday of the Scorpion before the day's play. Picked up the wicket of Walton, Kurt McKenzie, Carlos Brown. So we're Ryan John picked up the wicket of Jermaine Blackwood. Whips that down to long on for just a run. Keswick 211 runs on the board for the Scorpion after they were at 72 for four. After resuming from yesterday, many thought that they would have been bowled out before lunch after Nkuma Bana was sent back to the dugout for 45. But Garden held his nerve and put on a good partnership there. Now we see another good partnership here from Morris and Green. 
I love what I'm seeing here from Romaine Morris. Sort of what we saw in the first innings. The way how we go about controlling the innings. While at the crease, he's somebody that I think Jamaica should keep a keen eye on. That's a no ball from Darius Martin. And Umpire Williams are signaling. But yeah, he's someone I think Jamaica should keep a keen eye on. Really looks a good prospect. Wicked keeper, batter. Looks in control when he's at the crease. Looks like he knows what he's about. I really like him, I must say. What I know though, Keswick, that he's, you said he, he, he knows what he's about and know for sure that he's controlling his thoughts right now and be mindful of the moment of what is required of him and Derval Green. You can see that every now and again they will walk down and have a chat. Well, the good thing about Dorval Green is that he's not a stranger to occupying the crease. Five first class half centuries, so he can stick around with Morris. Yes. If they can get to T, pretty sure that that lead will get up to probably about Eight. 60, 65. And then after that, they both can come out and play shots like that. Looking good, Darvel Green. Didn't score a run straight to the field at, at cover. Kimani Mel is the skipper for the Volcanoes. But the first thing here is to get to T. Yes. They have a lead of 31. If they can get to T and both batters have to be aware of the situation and take it hour by hour. Still a whole day tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that the Windward Island Volcanoes would have thought that the game would have been over by now. But it's good fight. Good seesaw battle. This is what you call first class cricket. Will it be taken? Yes, he's gone. Derval was trying to go over cover, but didn't uh, complete the shot. The ninth wicket is down. The score reads uh, 213 for nine in 68.3 over as well. That was the skipper was looking for there, Keswick, to pick up a wicket before T. I'm lost for words, Miss Forbes. <laughs> as I mentioned, a couple of balls ago, I was saying that He's one that can occupy the crease. I have to swallow my words there. Darvel Green is gone. He's gone for seven. He, looking at him, he's disappointed knowing that he should not have played that shot. Just continue to try and work the infield and rotate the strike back to Morris who have been... He's on a go since he gets to the crease. He's on 53 from 62 deliveries. So the Scorpions... They only have 31 runs on the board, one wicket to go. And a couple minutes to, before we go to T. A couple of minutes before we go to T here. And Medley is walking out. You surely lost the words there, uh, Keswick, because that shot, he didn't need to play that shot at all. Well, it's called commentator's curse. And you want to see good cricket. Winners want to get it done and dusted today, but you want to see good cricket. That shot, it was short, but that one didn't have much pace behind of it. Devil Green punching it straight back to the man at mid-off. Jeremy Salazano, the catcher. Marquino yep. Minley walks out. That's also the four wicket for Darius Martin. So 13.5 overs now for him. Four for 72. 
with just one delivery to go in this over, will he try to get the five? But it was a good catch there at mid-off for him to come around and take the catch. It's 31 runs lead for the Scorpions. Well, he hopes to get to 60 before T there, uh, Keswick. Medley will have to try and work himself in. And that's the end of over number 69, 213 for nine. So Martin picks up four wickets for 72 from 14 overs. A pretty tidy over, just a no ball and a run and a wicket and four dots. And I'm sure Kimani, he's pleased with the way his bowlers perform uh, or have been performing from the first innings. Seems as if he's going to reintroduce Shamar Springer back in the attack to wrap things up for the Volcanoes. Well, well, this is going to be the third time Jamaica Scorpions play the Volcanoes. They played the third time or the fourth time, I should say four. The Volcanoes, they won two and Jamaica only won one. So this is the fourth time they will be facing each other. Even though Derval Green is gone, uh, Maris would want to continue on the trend that he's on. It is Shamar Springer back in the attack. One would probably say that it's, that it's done and dusted for the Scorpions. But it's not over until the fat lady sings. I wonder what song she will sing though, Keswick. I'll tell you what. I can't sing better than that fat lady for sure. <laughs> but whatever she sings today, looks like she will say windwards. Or maybe she just say, oh, volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it would be a lovely song. Just a single down to Long on. Kenneth Dembo doing the clean up there. I'm really impressed with how Kimani Melius rotated his bowlers, used them wisely. Vice Captain John being around for some time. Sunil Lambris at fine leg did captain the Volcanoes before and then with Alec Atanese and Karim Hodge coming back from that historic test series in Australia he would, uh, he would get a lot of assistance on the field you mentioned how Kimani uses, uses his bowlers but when before, just before lunch, Demba was on for a period of time, and after lunch, he continued with Demba. Demba got the wicket off of uh, Pete. So he's resting it, Demba now, and bring back Shama, Shamar Springer, looking to wrap things up here. Well, Pete took a little lanky into. Kenneth Dembo just giving himself a most of it and hit him over extra cover. And he's down the track. Leading edge. This could be a catch. Sunny Lambert running in. Drop shot. Wasn't fast enough. But if we just can, a single. Yeah, but if we can see the replay, it was a little bit of hesitation there from Ryan. And it was always Sunny Lambert's catch. Sunny Lambert is coming in. Ryan has to run back. So it was always Sunny Lambris catch. So he was looking at Sunny Lambris, hoping that he will get in quick enough. But good attempt by Sunny Lambris. 
falling short. Springer flashes his head. But it was definitely a good effort from Ambrose. Fatigue would be kicking in as well. It's, it's the third day. But right now, I think Romain Morris would be looking to take all he can get. Probably think it's not over until the fat lady sing. Keep at it. Your scoring runs back the same way. Be confident. You never know what's going to happen. Yes, and let the it's bowlers cricket. work for the, the for the wicket, but continue on the path that he's on. 70 overs completed. It is 216 for nine. Sure, that will be the message that we'll be getting from, from the 12 man Ramon Lewis. Yeah, just continue. Don't do anything out of character. Just continue. Take your time. But you never know. We have a lead of 34. Let's see if we can get to a lead of 120 or so. And let's see if we can make a game out of it. You never know, it's cricket. I'm pretty sure that the Volcanoes would have thought going into lunch that the game would be over before tea. But Morris came out and what an innings he's playing. Punch down the ground, just a single. Good work from Johan Jeremiah, which brings Marquino Minley on strike. Three days of cricket here at Sabina Park. It seems as if it's going to end in the third day. The Jamaican Scorpions, they were sent in to bat the first day after Volcanoes won the toss. And I would have done the same thing too if I was the captain winning the toss because there was a little bit of maestro on the pitch and they blew uh, the Scorpions away in the first innings, uh, 159. They managed to set a trail of 182 after the Scorpions bowled out uh, the Volcanoes so 341. They were sent into bat just before close of play with 23 overs remaining in the day yesterday. And the Volcanoes, they picked up four wickets, so 72 runs. And it's shocking to see after the Jamaica Scorpions resume on 72 for four. They are 218 for nine, leading by 36 runs. Morris picked up a half century. Well, it's the first half century in the Scorpions team. Fifty-six from just sixty-six delivers. And it is Morris who is on strike. That one just a bit too straight from Darius Martin. Worked. At mid on trying to go over the top of the bowling of Shamar Springer. That Springer's second over, he went for a top score of 68, so he has top scored in both innings. But the overall status of the game is that the Scorpions, they, with their second innings total of 234, they only lead by 52, which means... The Volcanoes, they need 53 runs to win this game. And this game will definitely be finished today one way or the other. Because there's no weather around. So it's either the Scorpions take 10 wickets for less than 52. Or the Volcanoes get to their target in, in a short space of time. I'm going to give you the scorecard. 
in a couple of minutes' time, or seconds, I should say. Mm, had some technical glitches here at Sabina Park, but we're up and running now. And the Scorpions players are now inside for uh, for the tea break. So, resuming the day on 76 for four. The Scorpions eventually dismissed for 234. The first man to go yesterday was Carlos Brown for a duck. He was followed by Kurt McKenzie. Then Chadwick Walton for 20. Kurt McKenzie made a duck as well. So those three players going to Darius Martin. Jermaine Blackwood was the fourth man dismissed for 16. And then this morning, Nkrumah Bono, the first man out for 45. Abhijay Mansingh, he was dismissed on the stroke of lunch for 11. Gordon Bryan was dismissed in the second over after lunch for 31. Pete Salmon made 15, Derville Green 7. And Romain Morris, the last man dismissed for 68. Bowling for the Volcanoes, Sherman Lewis, only four overs from yesterday, didn't come to the ground today due to a slight niggle, or wasn't on the field today due to a slight niggle. None for 25 from his four overs. Darius Martin, four for 85. Picked up the wicket of Derville Green today to go with the three wickets yesterday. 16 overs and a maiden. Ryan John, nine overs bold. Two maidens, one for 21. Shamar Springer, two for 30. Two maidens, 16.4 overs. He got the final wicket. And Kenneth Dembo bowled 22 overs. Only broken by lunch. With two for 53 and five maidens, and Shadrach Descartes, one for 12 from his six overs, inclusive of two maidens. So the Scorpions, 159 and 234 all out. We know the Islands Volcanoes, 341, and they need 53 to jump to the top of the table in this West Indies Championship four day encounter here at Sabina Park. They will begin. Their pursuit in a couple of minutes' time. And just before we take a break, just a short update here from over Chedwin Park in Spanish Town. Barbados Pride, 344 for 8 declared. Remember, they lost a day because of a waterlogged field on Wednesday. But the Pride have no worries. After declaring on 344 for 8, they rolled over the combined campuses and colleges for 185. Combined campuses and colleges batting a second time. They are nine without loss. And in St. Kitts, Rain has played a severe part in these matches. And Rain has delayed the third session in, well, at Warner Park. Hurricanes, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, the host team, 137 in their first innings. West Indies Academy, 177 in their first response. The Hurricanes batting a second time, they are 53 for one. And as we mentioned, there would be no play between the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force and the Guyana Harpy Eagles at Connery because of the disturbance of the covers by animals, which resulted in the pitch getting wet with overnight rain. So the Red Force, they were 215 for four after day two was completely washed out due to rain so as things stand here at savannah park and we join in a couple of minutes time the volcanoes they need 53 runs to win
So welcome back to Sabina Park. Join us just in time for the resumption of day three. A mere 53 runs to get for the visitors. And they have been disciplined from the moment that Kimani Melios won the toss on day one. He's striding out now with Jeremy Solazano to see if they can complete the mission which started as coming to Jamaica and taking full points from this opener. They have done extremely well with ball in hand. I think the only blemish they had was Shamar Springer missing a chance early this morning, the second ball of the day of Gordon Bryan with the Scorpions after resuming on 76 for four. They were dismissed for 234. And they had faced with a deficit of 182, presenting 52 run lead now. And the Volcanoes, they need 53 to win Darius Martin. Picking up four wickets, Shamar Springer. Two wickets to go with Kenneth Dembers. Two wickets. Ryan John had a wicket. Well, Descartes also had a wicket. So, Romain Morris, the wicket keeper for the, the Scorpions. He top scored it 68. He was the last man out. He top scored in the first innings. Keswick Williams is here with me. I'll be taking you through the proceedings. Marquino Minley is going to be bowling from that. The Michael holding end. He started from the Courtney Walsh end in the first innings. Well, at this point in time, I'm sure that the Volcanoes probably didn't think that they would have been out there batting again. Ideally, they would have probably wanted to bat once in this game. But the positive in this is that even though that the Volcanoes was really clinical in terms of performance in this game, the Scorpion did show some fight. So that's some positive there. Mainly to Melios. Positive in the first innings was Kimani Melios in that mid-afternoon session. Scored 31 but was dismissed with the very first ball of spin. Just a lapse in concentration from him as well. Mm. He had no idea how he played that shot or, or anything like that. He, he was clueless. Just a lapse in concentration. A really good player. Last year, first game against Trinidad and Tobago, 192. Young player, captain the West Indies on the 19 as well. Again, the wicket continue to give good bounce. Quality wicket. Stood tall here. It's day three. Normally in Test cricket, day three is supposed to be a good day as well. They prepared, but it's a four-day match, so you still want to see some level of was it, breaking. Was it, was it here in Jamaica? They had a in Jamaica, they had an abandoned test match, I yeah. think. Against England. Melius leaves alone for the second time in the over. A couple of deliveries spat off a length. A couple of the English batters just tapped the crease a couple of times before the umpire decided this is too dangerous. Well, Savannah Park is no, it's, it's renowned for pace and bounce and carry and even when the years when Nikita Miller and Odin Brown and company Bevan Brown were taking wickets at will still had the likes of Andrew Richardson Jermaine Lawson Jerome Taylor fastest spell I've ever seen from Andrew Russell is hair as well yeah him and Dale Steyn CPL. I was at square leg and I didn't see any of the ball. I was just seeing Sangakara collecting. Didn't see anything. He also said that it's not the best place to stay either. Uh uh. Yeah. <laughs> I go quicker than the air, but I can tell the deal stain is rapid. 
he understands his game so much and knows how to go about it. I can remember the first meeting we had when we were playing against Guyana. I think it was Guptil opening the batting for Guyana and discussing batters. And I can't remember who was Guptil opening partner. But well, when we get to Guptil. I think that would be Lendell Simmons at the time. I think it's I don't think it was Linda Simmons. Linda Simmons at that time, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so it's just that my mind can't oh. wrap around who was opening with Guptill at that time. But I don't think it was Linda Simmons that was at 2017. That was 20, it was 2016. 16. Yes, 2016. But I can't remember who it was opening with Guptill. But I can remember when he finished discussing the, the first batter. I wonder if it's Cameron Delford. It wasn't. Yeah. But well, we can, you can just go on with I your I remember yeah. after we discussed the first batter, when we got to Guptill, Dillston said, pass him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to worry about him. <laughs> Sangakara was like, what? Pass him. In swing, in swing, in swing, out swing, gone. Yeah. He came in the game. And he did the exact same thing. In swing, in swing, in swing, out swing, gone. He just did this. He opened his hands. He's like, told, I told you. you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a guy who understands his game. But that was the first over there from, from Minley. What I'm Minley seeing. over, first over. I'm seeing Dwayne Smith here in 2016. And it was, it was him. Yeah. And Gordon Bryant. It's had a good game so far. May 31. Took 4-4, four, four, 64. That year, Lyndon Simmons was in Sinkits. Yeah. So him and Faf Duplessis opened the batting for Sinkits yeah. that year. Oh, that was the same year that A.B. De Villiers played I for think Barbados. He played for Barbados. Yeah. Gordon Bryan normally gets shaped into the left-handers, shapes it away from the right-handers. So natural movement for Solazano is not to get carried away with what is happening outside the off stump, but to protect his stumps. Mm. It's found the match. I'm almost sure I was at this match, though. It, it was here. It was here. Mm. So it was Dwayne Smith. And Martin Guptill at the top for Guyana. I'll never forget those, those moments that I had. The big ones playing in a team full with stars. Jay Russ, Chris Gale, Sangakara, Sakibal Hassan. Some big ones, Dale Steen. Some future stars as well. Rockman Powell was he, in that he team. Emerged that year. I came out that year. Imad Wazim as well came yeah. out that year. But he he was there. He was there and then and then after that CPL, he took off. Yeah. Your friend was also playing at the time. Chadwick Walton was there as well. Yeah. So we had a really good team. Second year, they left. But enough of the T20 cricket. Jeremy Celisano, he's at the crease with his skipper. Trying to get them this 52 runs for victory. And if there's someone that you want to do well, it would be Celisano. Just based on his story. Sad story. Yeah. Sad story about his test career. Yeah. Should have given another opportunity. Sit down and ask you. Have conversations. With probably your grandkids or your kids and they ask, Daddy play test. He said, Yes, I did, but I didn't get to bat. Didn't get to bat. You said what you mean? They're gonna open their eyes. Okay, so daddy were a bowler. No, I was a batter opening batter. Okay, um what happened? <laughs> Unfortunate. But it's the end of the second over there.
Gordon Bryan. Still no one's going to see it. Um, they take in their own time. A lot of time still in the game. So we're seeing a different approach from Kimani Melius. A little bit cooler today. Here at Sabana Park, it has been cool everywhere else in the night. Feels like outside of the tropics. He's wrapped on the pot. Gregory Brathwaite is on move. Score remains. None without loss. That one sliding down and probably high as well. Good decision, good decision from, from Brathwaite. Double green on screen. Been around for some time. I'm going to ask you about the positives for the Scorpions. Mm. What, do you, what do you think they are? Short. There's deep backward square. He had only a couple of meters to move. But that was so sweetly timed by Kimani Melios that he had absolutely no chance. Rolled his wrists over it. Got on top of the ball, on top of the bounce to get it down in the ground. So even with the two men out, there was no chance of a catch. The positives here for, for the Scorpions is that they have a player like Romain Morris in the middle. Kind of give that stability that they need. Edge! Marquino Midley strikes. And the name that you mentioned... Takes a catch, Romain Morris. Beautiful delivery. That's the test match length they, they, that they talk about. Hitting the top of off and shaping away from the right hand up. That's also positive as well. The error that he just hit. This is the sort of error that the Volcanoes were, were really bowling in the first innings. That's the type of length and line that you need. Shaping away. Kimani Melius just. Getting hands too far away from them, but they're not getting close enough to the delivery. And that's the first wicket down. And Jamaica to themselves will say, if we could have only bat better in that second innings to get us over to a certain score, we probably could have made a game out of this. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's a drivable length. I'm going to ask for the replay again, but I don't think that was a drivable length. And that that's brings me back to the first day. The, the Jamaican Scorpions, they had a conversation in the dressing room. Yeah. And they were saying that the length that the Volcano Bowlers bowled to them was not a drivable length. Yeah, that wasn't a drivable length. That length that invites them, but it's not there to drive. Yeah. So that's a positive. Yeah. Another positive is having Garner O'Brien in your squad who can come and move the ball, seam the ball, and then can come and occupy the crease. Yeah. We saw that today. Their batting is long, and I could see that it's just that a lot of batter di did not get off in this game. You have Chadwick Walton and Chris... and Carlos Brung at the top. Then you have Kurt McKenzie, who's playing test cricket for West Indies presently. Then there's Nkroma Bonner. That's a good start when it comes to test cricket. Average close to 40. And then there's Jermaine Blackwood at five. Six, you would usually see Morris coming in. And then there's Pete Salmon. Just hope that those players between three and six, they can just bat for an extended period of time. If well, to be honest with you, the middle order did their job because we had we had Gordon O'Brien coming in the middle, scoring some runs there, and then there's Morris in both innings score a bit of runs in the middle. Yeah. What they need is the top order scoring over 150. 
That's something that they need. That can take them over that 250, 300 mark. And it's the end of the end of a successful over for Minley. Taking the wicket of skipper Kimani Melius. Inviting that drive, but it was nowhere close to that length. You should think about driving. You saw a, a few of the players as well in Australia with that same problem, that delivery. And just about the corridor of uncertainty outside the off stump on a back of a driving length. And the West Indians were constantly using their hands to get to the ball rather than leaving alone those deliveries. And it's because of the surfaces that we have been brought up on are accustomed to where deliveries normally tend to be about waist tight. But in Australia, once it gets above the waist, you can show the arms. You don't have to worry about the bounce. And it's the same thing with Melius here. It's a difference in conditions. As this one is angled into Solazano and it clipped fine. So, someone can't get there. And it's another boundary. And two straight from Gordon Bryan. And well played by Jeremy Solazano. Got inside the line. And worked it easily. Bread and butter that for a left under. Especially at this level. Strained on the line of the leg stump. Play off his quality as well. We'll always get that away. Very patient. He would occupy the crease. Think he's that opening batter that the volcanoes were looking for all these years. Brilliant shot. Sort of took a bit of shackles off his feet there, Jeremy Silazano. Well played. Uh, Badly line delivery again from Gordon Bryan. Off his radar. Usually immaculate on off stump. That's too sh straight and far too short for Solazano. And he's easy. Not a strike rate you will really associate with Jeremy Solazano. Not at all. Eight from eight. <laughs> well played. Comfortably behind it. Just punch it out to cover. No run. It looks steady behind the deliveries as well. That's never easier for him, to be quite honest. Always look a compact player. Very sad. What has happened to him in his test career? Very short one. I think he's one of those guys that really deserve another opportunity. There's a chance about catching, but it's not going to happen. He pounced on that pretty quickly. And it goes over the head of Midon. And that tells you the type of pace that is in the surface is not electric. Because he hit that way in front of square. He almost boxed it. And it goes over Midon for four. Guess you want to end this in a hurry. Jeremy Silazan, a great shot. Shot of authority, that is. Angling in again from Gordon Bryan. Three boundaries in this over. It's only 53 needed. So they want another 37. You asked me a question earlier about the positive or the positives going into the next game for the Scorpions. Scorpions. Yeah. Short and got and out of the way. Salazar is 16 for one after four. Yeah, he can continue. He's one of those players that can see some positives with him. The keeper, Romain Morris. Top scored in both innings. Pete Salmon doing the job with the ball as well. So there's a there's a lot of positives in this team. They just need to be a little bit more aware of the situation mm. and how they're gonna go about winning games, winning sessions. 
the first change that I would make is that I would look for to find a way to get OJ Shields into the level one C's fit. And I just think the team needs some more pace in it. I'm okay with Marquino Mindy. And I'm okay with what Gordon Bryan served up in this game. So obviously it would leave Derval Green on the fringes for Gordon Bryan to come in. That would be my change in the fast bowling stocks. I don't think you can really drop a batter after a game. Well, I think, given from what I heard so far about OJ Shields and the pace, I think as long as he's fit, he would definitely be in the squad. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. Saw him bowling a few balls this morning as well. Yeah, saw him this morning. He wasn't running in so as in on his usual. From steps. what I've been hearing from the coach, he's good, but it's all about managing him. You don't want to rush him back into into the cricket. So Give so him some time to get comfortable again, so that whenever he comes in, he can stay a longer time on the field and not just come in and getting injured and going back out again. You don't want to be known around the circuit as somebody who's injury prone. Yeah. And you're going to be playing Barbados next. And I think you be a little bit concerned about the batting because Barbados potency predominantly with the ball in hand. And Jeremiah is in behind that. He was a new man. Easy for him. He got the top score in the first innings. He has scored the most runs by innings in this match so far. 80. Somebody who worked really hard on his cricket. During the Christmas break, he went to Barbados at the batting lab do some work you have to so explain to the viewers what's the batting lab so the batting lab is a is a one lane net facility in Barbados where batters will go and you know take a hit but what's good about it is that they have a proper coach at that facility and after you finish batting they would sit down analyze how you're batting, what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, so you can get better. Johan Jeremiah was there for a few weeks before he came back to St. Vincent to join up with the Volcanoes in preparation for the four-day tournament. So he was there for a while, and you can see the difference in terms of how he's going about and constructing his innings. But that's the end of the over. End of the minimally over. You can tell you that he speaks well, you and Jeremiah. He understands the game based on how he interprets whatever you ask him. Well, he, he's also, I think he's still in university. He's doing a, a course online. But he did do sports science. So he has a degree in sports science, University of the West Indies. So it's really good what the CCC is doing. Chadwick Walton as well went to the University of the West Indies. He has a master's in sports science, Kieran Katoy. String again down the leg side there, shows for run out, but Jeremiah will be home. So a lot of guys went to the University of the West Indies and did sports science. I did it myself. Had to do my associate degree there first and, and I got a contract in England. I went to England. So the CCC really helped a lot of players in the Caribbean. A lot of guys who couldn't get on to their first class team or their franchise throughout the Caribbean. CCC opened up that door for them. Getting inward movement from round the wicket. 
Gordon Bryan. He's losing sight of his bearings for a while, so he has changed direction and he's gone round the wicket from over the wicket. There are always debates about the CCC and whether they should be in the four-day competition or should they not be in the competition. Well, the good thing about CCC, it makes you student of the game. A little bit of shape on that one again from Brian. Makes you student of the game. And the only thing that's really is an issue when it comes to being at CCC and and play first class cricket is sometimes you're so tired and then you get home and you probably have something to finish at school. Some project or something. But I mean, nothing good comes easy. And it's something that I've learned over the years from my good friend Chadwick Walton, Akeem Diwar, who now resides in America. I'm calling, tell me his nickname. <laughs> My good friend Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> it was a top leg spinning talent in his youth days, Akim Doar. Definitely. Spun a web around a lot of batters in Barbados. Went to the school next door, by the way. Oh. Kingston College. Mm, so played. Kensington for some time. He was one of those players you thought as a youngster growing up because he heard his name every day on the television. Akeem Diwa. Yeah, that he was going to be probably the next or the Caribbean Shane one. That, that's how you know that you're probably the future when you play school cricket. The yeah. reporters on the television would oh. probably say your name wrong first couple of times but then when you You'll hear Kesweek. <laughs> Kasweek. <laughs> no, those are the names that I heard. And then after a while, they start to get accustomed to it. You hear Keswick Williams, five for <laughs> <laughs> At the <laughs> end of over number six, it's 17 for one. The Volcanoes chasing 53 for victory. I don't think my name was easily. <laughs> what are you working at TVJ so you can put your name down on a paper no I wasn't said, there for one year you, this is how you say Foster yeah. <laughs> it was a simple first name it's just so yeah and, and another thing that I've, I've learned from from Darren Sam who is now the head coach of, of, of West Indies is that you know you're doing something in cricket when you're walking the, the streets and you're hearing Darren Sammy. You're yeah. not Darren anymore. Full name. Darren Sammy. <laughs> so, you, so your full name is now your, your first name. Yeah. Mainly continues to Solazano. The man from Trinidad and Tobago. I think he was a proper pick by the Volcanoes. So from, from the Jaff, the Volcanoes had a plan. They knew what they wanted, and they went for Salazar. I'm kind of surprised that they let go someone like Justin Graves. He's now at the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. He's now at the Leeward Island Hurricanes. Had a brilliant season at, in Super 50, earning the right to be called up for West Indies, Tess, and ODI, ODI team. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it for that first series after the Super 50. He was selected for the but then pick up an injury in that finals of the Super 50. I think that is one of the reasons that contributed to them not scoring the amount of runs they should in that finals. They fought gallantly though. But the, I think the Red Force were just too good in that tournament. They didn't lose a game. Saw some brilliant bowling from Alzari Joseph in that tournament. Yannick Carrier, Hayden Walsh, Teddy Bishop with the bat, Johan Jeremiah with the bat. And his opening partner as well, Kadima Lane. Kadima Lane. He's now on the West Indies Academy team to play in that 
to play in this 4 day tournament. Two, Two straight. straight. Yeah. And Derville Green has a lot of work to do. And he really can't do it because it's gone into the boundary. Looking for that magical delivery that comes in with the angle. But it was way too straight from Minley. And clipped away easily by Jeremy Solazano. That's his third boundary. His fourth boundary. He's, uh, he's, he's 17. Yeah, three boundaries of the previous over of Gordon Bryan. And now this, this one from Minley. And they have all been on the leg side. He's using the crease well, mainly, but then you have to get the lines right. Yeah. That's the one wide of the crease and going on with the angle. Touching down, shaping as if it's coming in, then it goes away at the last moment. It's the worst thing that can happen to a left-hander. Don't want that. Kimar Roach, Andrew Flintoff, those two guys have really owned this angle round the wicket to the left-hander and is shaping the ball away at the last minute. Driven by Solazano. No problems with that. <laughs> that completes over number seven at 21 for one. Remember, the Volcanoes... They're chasing only 53 for victory, so they're 32 runs away. Minley has taken the wicket of Kimani Melios for four. Scorpions looking just for some moral victories here, some small victories that they can take into next Wednesday's game against the Pride, who, by the way, are doing extremely well against the combined campuses and the college's team has really put them to the sword. And after that, 334 in the first innings. Dismissed them. And enforced the follow on. You know, the combined campuses and colleges, 33 for 1, 185. They were dismissed for initially. The combined campuses and colleges in response to that 344 for eight. And play has been called off in Connery for the guy in the Harpy Eagles and Trinidad and Tobago Red Force game. While the Hurricanes, they are 71 for one in their second innings. They are now leading by 31 runs. They had given up 40 run, a 40 run lead to the West Indies wow. Emerging Academy. And that is two straight again from Gordon Bryan. Just looking at Gordon Bryan here. He's getting the ball to shape into the left-hander. Why not come over? Use the angles. You want to shape it in, you run closer to the stump, and then if you want to go across him, you come a little bit wider of the crease. You that way, you have him playing at every delivery. Every delivery yeah. But coming from a wrong, the ball is shaping in all the time. He's not getting it to really straighten from a wrong, the wicket. Has a so it's a little bit easier for oh. Johan Jeremiah as he eases one out to backward point. So just little ways you can play with batters. Yeah. Analyzing batters because the thing is, it's not that bowlers don't know about batting, it's just that batters understand batting. But if we want to work out a batter, we have to understand how they go about scoring and what is the ideal way to get their wicket. Indeed, you so see batters it. just understands batting more than us, but we have an idea of batting and about batting. <laughs> And it's a similar case for the batters as well because you have to know what the bowler is thinking. Hence, when you're in training and you, you have training mates, you study their, their methods as to how they set up a batter so that when you go into a game, you're, you're also conscious that this person is trying to dismiss me like that or trying to 
induce the edge, or he's trying to play with my mind here. He sends back the man at deep backward square, but still, there's a strong possibility that he might be bowling that three-quarter length delivery on the stumps that I have to poke at it outside the off stump. Full delivery from Gordon Bryan and Jeremiah. Duly obliges with a drive, a square drive, an easy drive, and his first scoring shot after 19 deliveries is a four and inches the volcanoes ever so closely to a victory here at Sabina Park. The score is now 25 for one. It's a lovely shot. Sweetly timed. Looks a pleasurable player. Ease to cover. Not a lot of power yeah. behind that shot, just timing. Short, he doesn't like it there. But guess what? He's helped it away for four. Not, not the most comfortable shot there for Johan Jeremiah. But he got inside the line quick enough. Wasn't in control. But it's away from Pete Salmon who is at fine leg. And it's 29 now for one. The Volcanoes only 24 more. And they'll be dancing in the Kingston Sun to a victory. Just got a question to ask you, by the way. That if you think getting players from other territories could help the, the Scorpions, similar to how it's helping, for example, the Volcanoes, they finished second last season. Definitely can. A few years ago, they had. This is a chance, but only for the substitute feelers to help. It's over third man. One bounce. Solazano is in a hurry here. It was too wide from Mindy. Way too wide. Afforded asked him the chance hit. to be hit. Yeah. He was asked to be hit. Too wide from, from Minley. As you asked a while ago, if you think that players from other territories would be able to help, of course. Probably a couple of years ago, they had Devon Thomas here. They had Asad Fudadin. Smith out of Grenada. Chevon so Griffith as well. Chevon Griffith was here as well. So they, they had there a was, few players. There was a spinner from Barbados. I think his name is Kenroy Smith, I think. Kenroy Smith or Kenroy Williams? Kenroy Williams is the name. Okay. So yeah. he was here as well? Yeah. He was a leg spinner. So it's about pulling the right players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worked straight away. again. Yeah. Down to fine leg. Darvel Green just retrieving. So it's just about finding the right players to mesh with the ones that you have already and what will work best for you. Find out what you need. If it's a fast bowler, you go for that fast bowler. If it's a batter, you go for that batter. Whether it's a batter to open the batting, whether it's a batter to batter at number four, you have to know what your team, what your team needs to go into that tournament. Jeremiah goes for that square drive again. Kurt McKenzie's in the way this time. Hit him hard. Jeremiah loves a drive. But for Jamaica, I, I would say I love the makeup of the team. It's just that they're not performing right now. It's only the first game. You can see the plan. You can see the idea and the thinking behind the makeup of the team. That's something I can give the coaching staff. So the batting is longer. They brought back Chadwick Walton, full of experience. Yeah. Chris Brown. Sorry, I always Carlos. Chris Brown. Carlos Brown. I don't know. I'm, I, I, you're a dancer. I you think, said you're a dancer. I think, I think I'm going to listen to Chris Brown yeah, later. You're yeah, a dancer. Definitely. Well. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing in my head. Get out. <laughs> but yeah, there's Carlos Brown with Chadwick Walton. There's a young Mackenzie who is now in the West Indies test team. And Kuma Bonner. Blackwood, who will normally bat at number three and four for Jamaica, is batting at number five. 
There's Morris, the wicked keeper. There's Abijay Singh, who's batting at number six, seven, somewhere wrong there. And then there's Pete Salmon. Oh, beauty that is. And I have to mention Gordon Bryan because what I saw from him this morning, I cannot mention Batten and not call his name because he can hold up an end. He can occupy the crease. Well, ball there from Minley, finishing off with the dot ball. And for him to bat 100 deliveries, it's an, it's an indictment on the rest of the batters as well. Going to ensure that he goes into the meetings and say, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. All I did was pick my moments. He played what he knew. Yeah. So he Not didn't over complicating the issue. Exactly. So that was probably the. I'm trying to check the the balls faced by the Jamaica Scorpions players. Mansing faced 54 in the first innings. That was the most. Carlos Brown faced 46 for his eight, and Mansing made 16 from the 54. Romain Morris faced only 29 for his 35, but he was aggressive. Derval Green is a new man, and with a straightish mid-wicket in Chadwick Walton, he's do he does the feeling to that delivery. And in the second innings, Nkrumah Bonner batted 77. As I mentioned, Gordon Bryan faced over 100 deliveries, 103. Romain Morris batted 76. So the night watchman batted the most balls combined across innings. Two straight again. And easy pickings for Jeremy Solazano. I wanted to. Didn't get any help. So I'm seeing the same thing from Darville Green in terms of coming on wrong to both left handers. So I'm guessing they're trying to attack the stumps. Yeah. If they can get the ball to we swing from around the wicket to these left-handers, then they would be in business. But it looks like to me they're, they're only getting it to come in. So they're trying to attack the stump. So at least we're seeing a plan here. to try to see if they can prize out a, another couple just for respectability. Much better losing by seven wickets than nine. We got the wicket of Kimani Melios earlier. With only 18 away the volcanoes and they would want to ensure that they make it as dominant as possible so outside of yesterday's first session and a fraction of today's first session they have won every single session of this encounter two straight played straight by jeremiah who would be your man of the match, by the way? For me, I'll give it to Ryan John. After taking five wickets, coming out scoring 53 or so, mm -hmm. pulling back that game for the Volcanoes after Scorpions winning that first session on the second day. Ryan John and Springer showed how capable they are with the bat and then come back and take a few wickets again in the second innings as that over come to an end 
first Derval Green over. I agree with you, actually. I, I, I think it's between him and Springer. Springer also played a very handy hand. Thinking about it, we could probably give Springer as well. Yeah. Took a few wickets. Also came and back in the second innings with the wickets. And, and the those catches. two catches at the slip region. So his first game at the first class level for the for the Volcanoes. A really good outing. Scored 71. Took three wickets. Came back. Took to catching the slip and then take a few wickets as well in the second inning. So yeah. Had to call on him to wrap up the innings too. Because Morris Shema. was setting himself. Pete so Shema Springer could be the number one contender when you really think of it. Yeah, Salmon is around the wicket. He's a new man to Solazano. He got him in the first innings, by the way. Luckily, Boa ricocheted off his front pad and onto his stumps. Trying to give himself room to hit it down to long off. Too short there, beat Salmon. It's favored that Michael holding end all game. Bowled all his overs from that end. Oh, yes. Took three wickets in that first innings. Three for 78. Solazano drives pleasantly. Pierce the gap down to the boundary. Marquino Minley comes around. Two more. Takes the score up to 37. 16 away. The visitors. A lot of chatting between Romain Morris and Carlos Brown. Oh, yes, man. Come down for the ball, Peter. Come on, come down for the ball. I'll, I'll see. I'll see. So Lozano going about his business his own way. Looking pretty steady as well. Oh, that one's pawn past him. And umpire Williams, after the appeal for a stomping, was not interested. And that completes over number 11. That one came from wide of the crease. New ball as well. Yeah, spun past the edge. He's getting it to really rip off this wicket, Pete Salmon. I have to ask him after the game if it's, how do you pronounce it, Tykla? I don't know if it, is it, I don't know. How do you, how do you say it? Is it salmon or salmon? Salmon. Salmon. Yeah. Is it just like the salmon that like we eat? Like you eat. Well, they call him Big Pete or Peter. Big Pete or Peter? Yeah. How did he end up with Peter? His name is Pete. Yeah. I guess easier. Probably they wanted to name him Peter too. Normally in cricket they would <laughs> call your name shorter. So Darvel Green is operating, but if you're saying you want to say Darvel. You say Derv. You say Derv. Okay. And usually with the with the surnames you just add E onto everything. <laughs> Greeny. Greeny. <laughs> Williams Willie. <laughs> I've never heard man singing though. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably heard, uh, probably heard, you'll probably hear something like people like in Abbey, which is or Abbey Jai. That, yeah, or something like that. Well, Minley don't need anything. He has that already. Minley. Keep working, Minley. Probably yeah. just hear Min. Keep working, Min. Only 
Jerome, no. <laughs> Jerome, you had no. that before? No, Jerome. Or Fosty? No, no. They, they probably say Foss, not Fosty. Keep walking Fosty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I wasn't a bowler, so there was no need for them to call me that. Ah, you will keep a good catch, Fosty. <laughs> They call Derval Steely, actually. Steely? Yeah. I guess because he's, as, he's a tough campaigner. I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's edged away now to third man. <laughs> Jeremiah is enjoying himself in Jamaica. Gets another boundary. And it's ever so close to four the volcanoes. They're doing it in a professional manner. 12 runs away. Jeremiah has 12. Derville Green concedes his, concedes his first four of his spell. Just can't have fielders everywhere. You can understand. And you don't mind the fast bowlers bowling either, Keswick. You don't have to worry about resting saying that this game is through the window so we can rest some of the players i like the way they're going about it volcanoes a professional manner good to see the fight still in the scorpions to be we'll be turning their attention to facing the ccc next i think the volcanoes should be okay could be leaving jamaica with points all over as jeremiah goes up and over those are the fast hands that keswick williams talks about a lot about you and jeremiah got some width didn't have to worry about where the fielders were because he knew at the rate that he went with his hands, it was going to go over the fielder's head. And only eight more runs needed now. Two hits away. Climbed into that one, Jeremiah. Continuing his good form. As Foster mentioned, just eight runs away here. In bright conditions. Very happy for Solozano. Looks a good opener. As I mentioned, something that Winwards was searching for for the last couple of years. Now they found someone in Jeremy Solozano. End of the over. End of another Darvel Green over. Going at five runs or so for over. The most expensive bowler for the Scorpions in this innings. Similar to the first innings as well, but yeah. he's a good bowler. One game don't make you a bad bowler. I thought it was a bad game for him altogether. It's just an off game. Yeah. Experienced campaigner. And so many, ex has so much experience in regional cricket. Also, th the way how he got dismissed in the second innings, just told you it was just not his day. That was a short, wide, slow delivery. Could have hit it anywhere. Just not his day. Just, Just not, not his, his game. game. Yeah. Yeah, Jim. You hear that? Go, keep going, Peter. I don't know how to get it done. <laughs> Pete Salmon. <laughs> Should be Sally. Oh, yes. Can't be Peter. Yes, yes. Unless it's... <laughs> I don't know. He has a family named Peter? Not sure. <laughs> sure. It could never be Peter. Has to be Petey or Pete. Well, his his name is Pete already. Or Big P. Has to be Sally. Oh. Well, Jeremy and Blackwood will have to stick with that. Huh? He's not getting anything. Yeah. He has to stick with that. Yeah. Stick with that for life. Nobody's giving you the E or anything. Your name has to stay like that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone around the wicket again. He's living on a length outside the off stump to Solazano. 
And only eight runs needed here for the Volcanoes. And you just know. It's a matter of when, how quickly will they get it? That completes another over. And they've already looked beyond this game. The Scorpions, they're thinking about the Barbados game. <laughs> already. Because <laughs> <laughs> the inevitable is happening now. Uh, the Volcanoes are coasting to victory. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess Pete already booked his spot into the next game. <laughs> <laughs> so they're thinking about the Barbados game. That's how I want to start next week, Pete. <laughs> Keep on Morris. Always some fun. When you're wrong, the Jamaicans, there's always something to say. There's always a smile. Uh, it's a happy nation. Some will tell you it's not a happy place, but it's a happy nation. It is a happy place. I don't care what they say. <laughs> it is a happy place. <laughs> Sightseeing. All these artists where in the Caribbean you'll find so much artists in one island. Jamaica. Well, it's only Jamaica. Okay. Or Trinidad. Yes. Trinidad has a lot. Mm. Yeah. Of their own. I'm talking about artists that are known globally. Not really globally but regionally really really known regionally okay and jamaica has the most as known internationally as well yeah. i think our culture is probably the most dominant across the region as this one is on the parts of germany and probably because of the population as well it's it's the largest in the english-speaking caribbean so you have more jamaicans branching about the place that's true but then you have to think about what robert Desta Marley did for music yeah. Here in Jamaica, not just Jamaica, the world. in the Caribbean and in the world. Yeah. Can't wait for that movie to come out. Sounds as if you're a part of the movie, Keswick. Well, I heard the kind of money that would be pumped into <laughs> the film industry here in Jamaica. Down the leg side from Derval Green. I was trying to help that on its way. Jeremiah. I don't think you can get a seat in the theaters on. Windsor, by the way. Don't worry, I have my connections. Okay. You have more than me. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about that, I have to call Andrew when I get off. That's how I call him, Andrew. <laughs> oh, I don't say Mr. Hollins. What's up, Andrew? <laughs> Straight lines from Derville Green. Four consecutive dots in this over. As Morris said, that's how I want you to bowl. Next week. Next Wednesday. <laughs> He's thinking about the game against Barbados already. Well, they'll have enough rest. Tomorrow or tomorrow is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's a four days rest. I'm pretty sure that tomorrow will be a complete rest day. And the following day, and then they'll have two days of practice. Short from Solis from Green to Jeremiah. Out of the way. I think I want to see the development of Jeremiah going forward, that he gets more comfortable against the short pitch ball. If you're going to be batting at the top of the order, you're going to get a heavy dosage of those deliveries as well. Just uh, seems to be in a hurry to get out of the way once it's short. Just hoping that he's in the plans of the volcanoes going forward. Yeah. Not just a player, but one that they can keep around. Because in the few years, he would more than likely be leading this batting attack. Yeah. 
Looks a compact player. Made no over that from Derville Green. It's 45 for one. 14 overs bold. They said that there were 37 overs to go for the day. You're not gonna get beat. You're not gonna get so many. Next five overs or so, this game should be over. Or even in the next over. Could be. Well, Pete is really bowling well. It's two left handers at the crease as well, and Pete is spinning it. So Lazana pushes that one up to long off. Hasn't scored many of Pete Salmon so far. Only two Boy. runs conceded. But he bowled a maiden just now to Solozano. Get Opens him. up the blade. He actually got two through extra cover the over before. He gets one to the right of mid off now. Speaking of the blade, can't left today without shouting out Mark O'Dean over there in America. And the reason for that is because he's probably one of the main sponsors here in the Caribbean in terms of gears. Yeah. A lot of the players from the Windward Island team is using the MSDA kit. Johan Jeremiah, Jeremy Salazano. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Up. Yeah. Looks like the faster one. Came right Rush through. on to Johan Jeremiah quicker than he expected. But yeah, shout out to Mark Dane there in America. From the Caribbean by... It's from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Sunil Lambris as well is using that. Kenneth Demba. He's a young man from Barbados. What's his name? Paris, I think. Shakir. He's using MSD as well. So, it's a shout out to him for what he's doing and the support that he's giving to these young players. He supports Caribbean cricket as well. So shout out to you, Mark Odin, wherever you are. For your continued support, the development of cricketers here in the Caribbean. Oh, yes. I'm still hearing Peter. I don't know why now. <laughs> and the discussions that you had yesterday with Renardo, um, the, the gear, it's a big problem for school sports here in Jamaica. Affordability. Cricket is a very expensive game. It's guided back with a point. Yeah, football, football had it easy. Just a shin pad of socks and a shoe. Yeah. So the Volcanoes, they are one hit away from winning this game. They are 47 for one. Chasing 53 for victory. Mm. Yo and Jeremiah is going to be on strike. He's on 17. Jeremy Solozano, he's on 26. He'll be at the non-striker's end. Kimani Melios, the captain, went for four earlier. Went in the third over of the innings. Be looking to give his players a round of applause and greeting when this game is over because they really did well you can't really think of a player that really underperformed for the volcanoes a real all-round performance short over the head of square leg marquino Milly comes around and he does the feeling eventually at a stage where he thought it was going to spin away from him a trap has been set for jeremiah had Kurt McKenzie at backward square, deepish. And Carlos Brown is under the helmet at, at short leg. And you have Marquino Minley at long leg for that short delivery. And they're hoping to just ruffle a few feathers here. Jeremy Solazano is back behind that one again. No run.
Derville Green still searching for his first wicket of this match. That's too short. Man Singh is in the way at point. So I mentioned the positives. For you to mention the positives of the Scorpions. What about those of the, the Volcanoes? I know it probably be in abundance, but I think they have a selection headache coming up. Because I think Kabim Hodge and Alec Athenes, they must play. They're test players. And once they're fit, they're going to find a way into that 11 against the combined campuses and colleges team. If we get a chance to discuss it. Solazano steers it down to a third man. It's running away to the boundary. Mansing gives chase. He's going to pull it back. I think. Yeah, he does. And three more runs. Two more runs to get for the Volcanoes. Nicely deflected there by Solazano. Just used the pace and angled the bat late. Had it all along the ground. Well, looking at the windward steam, there's a lot of positives. First positive I will start with is that they have two of the senior players coming back in the next game. The only negative there is that somebody would have to go. Sad way to go, but it is what it is. When you have Alec Atenez and Kevin Hodge coming into your squad, you have to make room. Short, and that is it. The Volcanoes, they wrap up a nine-wicket win against the Jamaica Scorpions. And just like how they started the morning, they finish on top. A beautiful display of attritional cricket from the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Won the toss on the opening morning. On a wicket that had a lot of assistance for the bowlers. And they used it to the best of their abilities. Skittled out the Scorpions for 159. And then they racked up over 300 runs in their first innings. And then they bowled out the Scorpions again for 234. Mm -hmm. 341 they made. 234 by the Scorpions. And then Johan Jeremiah and Jeremy Solazano after the dismissal of Kimani Melios in that third over. For four, they wrapped up a comprehensive win and a well and truly deserved win against a Scorpions team that just did not come to the party with bat in hand, Keswick Williams. Commanding victory for the Volcanoes. That's their fifth consecutive victory from last year. They won four in the back end. Starting of this year, first game against the Jamaican Scorpions. And they have done a tremendous job. Skipper Miller, something to be proud of. First game as Skipper, doing the job, doing the business. The way how he led his bowlers, I'm very impressed with how he worked in terms of setting his fields, his plans, the execution from his bowlers. Excellent work. And he would get a lot more help in the next game because he, he now have Kevin Hodge and Alec Atten is back into the squad. So a lot more strength with the batting and Kevin Hodge assists with bowling as well. So the Volcano starting this season with a commanding victory over the Scorpions. Scorpions have some work to do. We're back here again next week, Wednesday. The Scorpions will take on the Barbados Pride. That's Craig Bradford and his men. And we'll see how that will go. They need to improve. They need to do better. I'm expecting that they will do better with this lineup. Just an off game for them. So I'm expecting that Andrew Richardson and Jermaine Blackwood and the other seniors will have a sit down and plan how they're going to approach Wednesday here at Sabina Park against the Barbados Pride. Well, that's 13 games without a win for the Scorpions in all, all competitions. It's 
not a happy reading but that's it here from Sabina Park because they have been soundly beaten by the Windward Islands Volcanoes and they look the better outfit from day one it's now day three and a half and they have completely dominated this contest and they stroll home by nine wickets and from myself here Jerome Foster Keswick Williams and Kimberly Forbes as well as Renardo Brown it's bye from us here at Sabina Park you can join us again next Wednesday when the Scorpions take on the Barbados Pride in the second round of the West Indies Championship. Until then, 